What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Flagrant 2, No Easy Buckets Analysis by Assholes, Water Cooler Commentary for Your Sports Needs. This episode has been brought to you by New Sponsor Alert. Yeah, get that money. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Skeptic Distillery. Guys, Skeptic is a premium vodka and gin distilled at cold temperatures using the cold vacuum still. Okay, let me put this in perspective here. This is, I was very excited to actually start working with this company. We've been talking to a lot of different alcohol companies and deciding who mm -hmm. we were going to uh, rally around. And you know how there's cold brew coffee? Yes. Yeah. This is uh -huh, the technique uh -huh. they're applying mm. to alcohol. So, so this fun. is cold brewed vodka. vodka. They have cold brewed gin. They're working on a whiskey as well. And actually, if you see the bottle, that's not font that's literally written in this oh, is the first fire. batch from the bottom wow. so i got something from the from like the third batch anyway it, it's really cool so uh i asked the guys basically what they said is that um when you distill it at that temperature it allows you to distill it continuously and it's at 50 degrees uh fahrenheit or even below freezing which preserves the delicate flavors and improves the removal of impurities. Neither of us know what the fuck that means. But Sounds like it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, sure I'm telling it's you, their cold I, brew coffee supposed to be smoother. That's, yeah. It's not, doesn't have that bitter fucked that's up what shit. I'm thinking, yeah. It is, uh, and I tried it, man. And I'm not even the biggest vodka drinker, even though I was up in at the game this weekend. <laughs> I had quite a lot of vodkas, but uh, but I, I thought it was good, man. I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, the, the results speak for themselves. Uh, Skeptic Vodka went, um, or actually it swept the USA Spirits Awards, earning Vodka of the Year and a 90-point overall rating. No shit. We're talking about the next game here. No You're going to see all like the that. other companies hop on board with this uh, cold brew, just like you've seen all the other companies hop on bro yes, board sir. with the uh, cold brew coffee. And um, let's start with the first one. Let's start with the guys who changed the, changed the game, man. It's Handmade American in made too. That's what I'm saying. Handmade, Handmade in, in Chicago. Chicago. There we go. And who's more Skept drunk than Chicagoans? <laughs> right, right. Skeptic <laughs> liquors are crafted to be a truly neutral spirit, unmatched smoothness and purity. Perfect for cocktails, neat or on the rocks. Currently working on a whiskey by the end of this year. Now, Ooh. assholes, you can purchase the bottles online at skepticdistillery.com. And if you use the promo code FLAGRANT, you can save 20% off all purchases. Any purchases over $100 will receive free shipping. That's for y'all, okay? We're turning skeptics into believers. But um, psh, but for real, check that out. Shout out to Flagger Media Group for coming through, man. Really killing it. Uh, this episode is also, guys, is also brought to you by yet another new sponsor look at mm. us and who brought it in look at we got flavor we got, we got oh, okay. to my okay. guy devon man okay. devon coming through jamil coming through guys this one is a good one okay. i we really we really should we got to get behind this one as well i mean we have so many good things um what are things that uh what is something that is ubiquitous with black skin uh, you razor bumps, cocoa butter. <laughs> Damn right, oh, cocoa oh, butter. Oh, 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 okay. Razor bumps. My bad, guys. What is something? <laughs> what is something? White dog. What is something ubiquitous with uh, uh, black music? Slacks, bass, drums. <laughs> I was gonna say marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> cocoa wow. butter infused with CBD, oh, baby. Oh, Let's okay. go. Game changer. I need, Game a, I need changer. a case of that. I need a case of that. Game ASAP. changer. Okay. Coco Dream, that C O C O A, Dream LLC, is bringing you a CBD cocoa butter. Okay. Mm. It is unbelievable. Obviously, you guys know the health benefits with CBD. Yeah. Everybody's been on it. Yeah. You can do drops. You can do. Uh, I put you in know. my old diffuser before I go to sleep. I sleep like a dream, man. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. And you can sleep like a cocoa dream with <laughs> Cocoa Dream LLC. No, in all seriousness, I think this is a brilliant idea. Um, I haven't seen anybody marketing specifically for lotion purposes, yeah. but why not? I mean. I had I have used CBD creams before, but they weren't like, hey, this is also going to help your skin. It was just like rub this over the part of your yeah. muscle that's like hurt. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why not kill two birds with one stone here? And be, if you be glistening at, at the same time. The Venn diagram <laughs> of black people who use cocoa butter and marijuana is <laughs> yeah. a huge overlap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just my exact demographic, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. Being in lotion. Okay, so don't be ashy and be kind of healing. Not high, <laughs> but you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> Look, the the reality is is that the um there was a farm bill in 2018 and when it was passed, 
It made CBD legal. These guys have figured out a way to fuse cocoa butter with natural extracted CBD straight from hemp. Cocoa Dream LLC is family owned and operated right here in the U.S. This product is not designed to get you high, ladies and gentlemen. It is designed to make you feel better. It's a product for pain relief. All right. Uh, you, you work out. You, you're you an old man like me. Maybe put it on a hemorrhoid. I should try it on the hemorrhoid. Dude, I don't smoke weed and I want this. You got to do it. <laughs> Good for your hands, back, yeah. shoulders, knees, and anywhere you experience joint or muscle pains. Also, use as a good moisturizer. Head over to CocoDreamLLC.com. That's CocoDreamLLC.com and to place your orders, okay? You place your orders for you, your friends, your family, your coworkers. I know we got Father's Day coming up, right? Ain't Father's Bruh. Day? Get that Father's shit. Get Day your pops. Father's you know Father's your pops is ashy and, and, and sober. <laughs> why, you, why your pops ashy and not high, bro? Get it together. If you... Someone... That trains, you know, someone hits the gym, anybody just experiencing pain, you know, what you can do, you can use the offer code flagrant to save some money off your purchase and receive free shipping for any purchases over $100. The offer code is flagrant, as always, to save money off the purchase and free shipping for any purchases over $100. All right? Son, if you a father, a lot of asshole fathers, get it for yourself. Your kid gonna get you an ugly ass necktie. <laughs> get yourself something. Get you some vodka and some CBD oil and have a goddamn good time. Get it, baby. Coco Dream LLC dot com. Okay. Make sure you go contact them. Do it up. Uh, and finally, this episode is also brought to you by Manscaped. Shout to Manscaped, man. Shout Manscaped, Manscaped coming back yeah. once yes, again. Um, I know we got some some assholes out there who have been trimmed up. Y'all have been talking to me about it at the shows. Pull up. I'm not sure why you share it, but I'm with it. We can share <laughs> yeah. all these things. We need to. We need to. It's a trust circle. It's it a is trust a trust circle, circle yes. man. You got that lawnmower 2.0 because that's the real. All right. I think that. Um, I think that the guys at Manscaped told the uh, Flagler Media guys that uh, the lawnmower 2.0 is is the most purchased item that they have. That we put that over the top. So that lawnmower 2.0 kit is really what's changing the game. The assholes are on that. Any ladies listening right now, you have an expectation for a ball sack and pubes. <laughs> and that is trimmed. That is kept tight. All right? And if you haven't purchased anything, hurry your ass over there to manscaped.com. Use our promo code FLAGRANT. You save 20% off anything purchased, and you get free shipping anytime you or anyone you know uses our code at checkout. That's right. Share the code. Share the wealth. You know what we do here, Radical Gifting. Mm -hmm. So if you're not gifting the actual Manscaped stuff, you can give that code. There's no reason you should be shaving your body your balls and pubes with the same razor or trimmer you use on your face. We already know this, okay? We're not going to go over it anymore. You guys already know. Separate razors. And if you're going to have something for your balls, it might as well be the best company with ball razors, and that's obviously Manscaped. You get that lawnmower 2.0 trimmer with skin-safe technology for a smooth shave every time. Everywhere, they got the anti-chafing deodorants, moisturizers, they now have a foot spray that smells amazing, by the way, guys. Yes, white people, we do not wash our legs or our feet, <laughs> but we can spray them down. Why? Why? It's not that so, far. Like you can, so you can support Manscaped, dog. Relax. Exactly, <laughs> man. That's why we don't do it. All right. Buy white you, know you wouldn't hear white people. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, stop offending yourself or the people close to you by not being groomed or smelling bad. Get it done for yourself, for someone else. Do what you got to do. Do it for Father's Day. Do it for your family. That's manscaped.com. Promo code flagrant. Go get it. Now, let us start the show. Man. Hello, new listeners yeah. that came on board with um, uh, the all Lisa the Ann. Shouts to all y'all that found us through Lisa. Shout out yeah. to Lisa, man. Ain't Thank nothing you. wrong with following some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with it. We here for you. That's how societies that are built. That was an epic episode. Yes, it was. I think man. we yes, had something was. around quarter million uh, listens yeah, with that one. Almost half a mil. Well, over half a mil now with uh, the Akash, Lisa. Oh, oh. Well, we're talking that the clip the actual, is, oh, the, the clip, clip went viral. viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clip definitely. viral sensation, mm -hmm. but the whole episode around a quarter million, mm. so that means we got some new people listening. We're speaking to you right now. What's up? That's just a minor dose of flagrancy. What's up? You want some real fuck shit? Go listen to Franks and Beans. This is the oh, year. Oh, this is the one year anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> and y'all don't even the know what we're out. talking about. There's an episode on here that probably should be taken off. It should be scrubbed. <laughs> the wildest 11 minutes in the history 
of podcasting exist on Flavor 2. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you exactly where it is because Listen, if you're probably, new, I can't make a daddy. No, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> no. No. This shit will be shut down immediately. Mm-hmm. YouTube mm-hmm. going to get us the fuck out of here like <laughs> Steven Crowder. <laughs> Listen, if you're a new listener, you're probably like talking to somebody who's been a long time listener and if the first episode I guarantee you they're gonna uh, suggest to you is the Frank and Beans episode and it's the year anniversary of that so go back so listen I, to that and welcome to Flavor 2 I, ha- I, was, I was doing shows in San Francisco shouts to everybody who came out for that that was amazing we'll get to that later but yeah. a, a woman came up to me she's like let me tell you something I just had a, uh, I had a kid mm-hmm. and I was wildly depressed I was going through postpartum yeah. depression mm-hmm. And I mean, it was like my life was like falling apart and um, I was just searching for things to distract myself. And I was listening to the Franks and Beans episode. <laughs> and she, she said, she said that 11 minutes changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> said it changed her Get life. Out of here. Dude, said it changed her life. Wow. Dude, I love it. Wildly depressed. And we made fun of retards for 11 minutes. <laughs> and immediately she was like, life is that bad. Life that bad. Maybe I should feed my kid, you know, keep working, put some clothes on his back, do what I got to do. All I'm saying is we're doing the Lord's work. Okay? Oh, God. You know, I this know is, this is God's favorite podcast. Say what? This is God's favorite podcast. It's so. Obviously, it's right. God's favorite podcast, bro. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that? And you know how I knew the Lisa Ann episode slapped? Because what? for the first time in the history of this podcast, the yeah. video went out. Yes. And yes. people still tuned in to the tune of a quarter million listeners. Record numbers, mm. and maybe that's the sign that we should be cutting that video off more often. Maybe we <laughs> should. Maybe okay. we're what's wrong. Maybe okay. we're what's wrong with the podcast. Maybe this is more of an audible thing. You maybe we ain't as cute as we thought we were. I'll tell you the most flattering thing about the yeah. Lisa Ann episode is that 600,000 people <laughs> listened to that, right? Yeah. Or no, watched it. 600,000 people watched the clip on YouTube at mm. this point right now. And... They could watch her get cummed on, and they chose, and they chose the to watch <laughs> us ask her questions. Like, that is how you got to be good at interviewing. Like, it's rare Listen. in life if I'm speaking to a hot girl and, and I'm thinking, I would rather talk to you <laughs> than watch you get fucked. Listen to you. Listen to you. Watch you get fucked. Like, like, imagine any interaction with a hot girl. Yeah. There was a like one click away from her being in that exact same position, butt only she's getting fucked yeah. and she's butt naked. Like, they stayed and watched the whole episode. That's, not, that's, that's not how just, dope we are. That's not just a testimony to us. That's a testimony to Lisa as well, man. Yeah. She's Yo, a great yeah. talk. Yeah. Shout out to her, Yo, too, Yo, Lisa's man. a star. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean that 100%. Yeah, yeah. She has a very intriguing star quality. Yeah. It And there's a reason why it resonated with porn, but it would have resonated with whatever other thing she was doing. She would have been successful doing. in anything she wanted to do. Yes. Yeah. She I just mean, decided to fuck on Within the entertainment yeah, 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 yeah. industry, yeah. She, yeah. Has, she has this, uh, there's a magnetism. Some people have that. Yeah. They just fuck it. They just do. You she can't explain it. Too. She got it, bro. Anyway, so I thought that was really cool. Um, we have some. We have some serious stuff to to talk about. Obviously, yeah. You know, today sucks. <laughs> today sucks. I was in uh, Toronto last night for the game, and oh god. Yeah, it was. I I've I've slept uh, maybe a combined total, maybe two hours. Hmm. Well, outside of one thing, let's just let's say two hours in the last four days. It's not really that, but around it. I was in Toronto last night for the game. Uh, It was there was a weird feeling in the arena. Mm. It was an odd feeling. And uh, what do you mean? (sighs) Odd, like everybody felt like something is up, or odd, like they're like we're so happy. This is weird. They were happy. It was exciting, but. It, it didn't feel like a closeout game. No. It didn't. The best way I can describe it is this. And, I, and we'll go back to, you know, obviously KD and everything in a second. But when Kyle Lowry missed the shot or it got blocked, right? Yeah. It was the most anticlimactic finish to an NBA Finals game with a last second shot that I've ever seen mm-hmm. in my entire life. And I think now that I really kind of process it, I think that. They've hit every last second shot this playoffs. So I think the entire stadium mm. in that moment was thinking, This is it. Well, yeah, we're just going to hit it. Yeah. I, I thought like, it was. They didn't even realize they were down. No. So when you miss that shot, usually there's like a, Oh. Yeah. You know, like a, you like everybody goes, Oh, mm. there's a, this is exa- that exasperated yeah. what moan or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It was silent. Yeah. You it can't. was. 
Yeah. It was so it was such fucking a, weird. I'll tell you, it probably, because it, it, it translated on TV as well. Like, I've never, I told people, like, I've never watched a game that had no, I mean, I guess in the roundabout way had to do with the Knicks, but yeah. didn't have any Knicks rooting interest that I went through so many fucking up and down emotions watching right. that shit. Because it's like, at first, like, all right, it's a formality. Like, Toronto's going to close it out and right. whatever. Yes. Then it's like, oh, shit, KD might be playing. And then it's like, oh, shit, he actually looks really healthy. And right. it's like, oh, shit, he's busting their ass. Right. And they're down 3-1. If there's any team, if, there, if there's anything more poetic to happen to end this dynasty, it's them to come back 3-1. And it looked like they was about to do it. Right. Because KD was looking like he was on his way to a 40-point game. Stuff was getting loose. And they were down by, like, double digits. Right. And then he fucking goes down. And you, you hope for the best, but, like, I felt like everybody knew. Immediately, like I nobody didn't. here is doctors. I thought it was a calf strain, and I was like, "Good, missed a couple games." No. <laughs> no. Oh, let me let me real no. quickly say something. I forgot to say this mm. in the beginning, um, and I'm doing this at this point of the episode right now, so that Alex doesn't have to go back and re-edit <laughs> stuff. But uh, you. this episode uh, is actually a two-part episode, right? Because right, right, the right. back half of this episode, I'm telling you guys this now, is an interview with uh, one of the most iconic. Um, uh, character actors in the history of uh, television. of television. Yeah. It is uh, Jeremy Piven. The yes. guy played Ari Gold, Ari Gold on Entourage and a plethora of other characters he's in. We have a great long conversation about him, comedy, you know, him losing everything because of uh, the Me Too movement and what he's doing now. So it's very, very cool combo. Can't wait for you guys great to listen to that. follow up to last week too, man, just as far as like big guests. Talk about shit, people like... getting fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what we're doing out here. Yeah. But, but anyway, so so keep tuning into that. But back to back to the final. Yeah, man. So like, just when he when he went hurt when he got hurt, everybody's like nobody was really con- concerned with the, ca- the cap strain because they said he couldn't get hurt anymore. Well, that's what the doctors was telling people, right? Can we? But anybody yeah. with any fucking brain is like, yo, if you're laboring one side, something else is gonna get fucked up. If you're over overcompensating, it was the same leg, though, same right? Leg. It was the same leg, but. When he went down, that was my thinking. I'm like, oh man, he was going so hard to favor this and something else. But then he saw the replay and the fu- and you literally see the Achilles fucking pop. See, I didn't see that until someone oh, DM'd us. My okay. God, so, yo. a couple things. One, addressing the booing. Yeah, the cheering or whatever. Uh, sorry, sorry, addressing the addressing the cheering in mm-hmm. Toronto. Uh, to be fair. It was a little shocking that all these people were cheering. And there were people. The chant was "KD's done, KD's done," mm. right? Yeah. Wow. But to be fair to them, everybody in that moment thought he just pulled his calf again. Mm. That's what I thought, right? Mm-hmm. And it was all calmed down. And then when it looked like it was serious, there was this kind of somber note that took over yeah. the arena and that's what i felt for almost the entire game shout out that. to the to lowry and like abaka like <laughs> to, that, you know quiet like everybody. yo like no this is this this isn't this isn't good yeah it was the right thing but yeah, let's yeah. go let's talk about something because we need to discuss something this yeah. is very important the warriors are scum Sc- yeah God. the warriors are the scum Absolutely. of the, the warrior organization and that crocodile tear fake phony oscar worthing bullshit performance that bob myers put on in mm. that press conference where he fake cried talking about eh, it's an achilles injury motherfucker you knew it was you an know achilles it was. Injury. why do you think that there was ice on his achilles for the last the two whole weeks fucking week. why why do you think that uh every one of the reports that you got from the team doctors said that there was an issue with <laughs> his achilles right <laughs> so let's talk about what scumbags this organization is number 1 i have on very good authority that they were pressed Pressuring him to come back. Absolutely. Not only were they pressuring him to come back internally, they were pressuring him to come back with the media. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they were dropping all these articles about why maybe he's faking, mm-hmm. maybe he's actually okay, wow. maybe he's protecting himself, etc. Even agency, saying yeah. number two, number two, real quick. The reason why they're pressuring him to come back is because they know he's gone. Mm-hmm. So if something does come happen to him, it doesn't cost him anything. You know he's off the books at the end of the year, and you know he's not re-signing. Now, we got Clay has a little hammy in- injury. You know he's re-signing. So what do you say to Clay? You say, please, don't play game three. You could possibly hurt yourself. 
How dare you? Oh, no, I know you're coming back to my team, and I got to protect your body. But this guy over here that I know is leaving, I don't care if his whole shit busts. Mm -hmm. Go beat it. And this nice guy approach that Steve Kerr uses all the time, this, I'm a sweetheart. I'm, I'm just here. I'm just lucky to be in this position. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> you ruthless piece of shit. Mm. Okay? At the end of the day, you knew this guy had a partially torn Achilles. I don't know for a fact it was partially torn, but remember when I said he's not playing? Yeah. yeah. The reason I said he's not playing is because the information I got was accurate that he shouldn't torn. have fucking played. Yeah. There's not, and it's not even just you. There was not one single report. Like when somebody's nah, injured, we gotta give flagrant credit. We get credit on this motherfucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew said before anybody else, he is not playing. Yeah. And he said the only way I could see him playing is if they go down two games. But he still shouldn't play. Or he's mm. still not probably yeah. going to play. Because what, what what my prediction, not my prediction, what I basically said was based on the fact that the injury was far more severe than people knew. Mm -hmm. And this is what, to use your point about the media. Another way I think they kind of pressured him right. was since the fucking day he got hurt, he could be back in a week. So yeah, when, yeah. And when it goes four weeks and you keep saying, oh, I think he might come back this game, yeah, he'll yeah. likely come back game three or right. game four. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you start looking at Katie like, what the fuck, dog? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so then, so now we have an interesting situation and it's really interesting because of, uh, of the parallel with Kawhi's, uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, what happened was Kawhi got injured. He didn't like the treatment that he got from his team. Uh, and him and his uncle, uncle Dennis, uh, basically said, hey, we're going to sit out, we have to recover, and we want to trade. We don't want to be part of this organization because you don't value my health, mm -hmm. right? So what does the organization do when you have somebody meddling in your player's ability to play for that organization? They have to cut that person's legs out from under them, right? Mm -hmm. So they call you crazy. It's no different than what they did with Chappelle, yep. right? Chappelle goes Greedy. to Africa. Sure, sure, but Chappelle, Chappelle goes to Africa, yeah. right, and leaves $50 million on the table. They're like, well, shit, we can't let him... We can't let the general public mm. know what Chappelle knows. So you get like the Spurs brass. You get like the fucking the, the pillars of that franchise. You get Ginobili talking shit about Kawhi. Tony He's Parker. He's not a good teammate. Bruce Bowen, who's in the press. Like Boom. literally everybody but was shitting on this Most importantly, not only Kawhi, it's the father figure. Mm. It's Dennis. Mm -hmm. Right? You go after the person that's advising him. Mm -hmm. And you call them crazy. Right? Because you want to delegitimize them in the press and hopefully use the press to delegitimize Dennis in this situation mm -hmm. to Kawhi. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like you're playing, it's warfare yes. right here, right? Yes. So what what happens? Kawhi actually trusts Uncle Dennis that we all think is a nut job mm -hmm. from Jersey. Yeah. I mean, even my friends in the league were like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Like, why does he even care? Now Kawhi's in the finals, up 3 2, and could potentially and should win a championship and now you have KD and we don't someone know. who doesn't have an Uncle Dennis somebody who obviously has his mother but he doesn't have someone in his life who's gonna say hey sit your ass down on the fucking bench don't be a hero here you're not built to play for this and you are gonna fall apart if you go out there and I don't give a fuck what the organization says or what the media says you are not playing mm -hmm. he didn't have an Uncle Dennis in this situation mm -hmm. a crazy Uncle Dennis and now he's gonna miss the next year recovering from an Achilles yeah. injury and he might not ever be the same. And he, he might, might not, not ever, ever be, be the same. same. That's that's the one part that fucks me up the most. Like if it, if it was a cap strain or whatever the fuck it was that w he originally was hurt from, we all assumed by the by the start of next year he'd be back to normal. Yep. But this shit completely so up, changes man. the entire fucking face of the NBA. Not just for the Warriors. Landscape not just for the Knicks. Different for potentially, everything yeah, is potentially fucking different. If you're KD, do you opt in? Yes. You got to. Real I opt in just to you have fuck to. Golden State yeah. over. You yeah. fucking have Pay to. Pay me thirty million to recover, you pieces of shit, mm -hmm. and then I'm leaving and immediately I'm afterwards. Yep. Now let me ask you let me opt in mm -hmm. just by for everybody's yeah, listening. So so KD has a player option next year with the Golden State Warriors. So right. it's his choice to either opt out and test free agency or opt in with the Warriors and take the thirty one million that they owe. And the thirty one million he could essentially for the whole year rehab, he gets to fuck over the Warriors because mm -hmm. now they're in cap trouble, they can't sign people. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what I would do out of spite. Of course. But here's the thing. He's going to get offered... Four years or 160. He's going to get offered the full thing from mm -hmm. all the teams. They're mm -hmm. going to go, hey, rehab for a year. We trust your greatness that you'll be able to come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An injury that I can only think of one person that came back from. Who? Brent Grimes. Yeah. Mm. It's the only successful I ACL. Thought. I was hoping there was I mean, another. Achilles. Oh, sorry, Achilles. I'm, I'm trying, trying to, think. to think who. Wesley Matthews played. He wasn't as good. Wesley, Wesley's not the same, bro. The Achilles is almost like the fucking... 
Dude, there's a goddamn Greek character based yeah. on Greek god based on this fucking injury. Yes, like that's how he devastating was unstoppable. it is. Yeah. Okay, KD is a Greek god before this. <laughs> unstoppable, you, you great defender, hitting threes from anywhere. Yeah. Kind of a bitch, but whatever. <laughs> Hurts his Achilles, never the same. Uh, I'm so... That's a great point. Can I, never... can I defend the Spurs real quick? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge Spurs fan, but I respect them. Sure, sure. Pop has a, a history of sitting players. Against the Warriors, when they had the dirty play uh, and Zaza. slid their under, yeah, Zaza Pachulia, mm-hmm. Pop did not let Kawhi play. He's like, he's not playing. Yeah. He did that, I think, in a series before, and he had done that with Tim Duncan before, too, in like a game seven, I think. He yeah. was like, he's not playing. Yeah. He was, we're going to prioritize his health. I still believe you, but I do think let they me, are a let, little more. And let me clarify. I, I don't know where the blame goes on that, and yeah. I think it's, and I love Pop, so like, my own bias is going to slide in here. Mm. Yeah. I would love to believe that Pop was not part of the decision making on the Spurs that said that he was ready to go and his injury was, you know, right. over exaggerated right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would like to believe Pop was like, hey, if Kawhi says he's injured, he's injured. Mm-hmm. Right. But the Spurs were like, well he's we're all, we're also paying him a lot of money, so get the fuck yeah. out. I mean there. they're team doctors for a reason. The one thing I'm taking away from this is that like the job of a team doctor in the NBA is gonna be fucking scarce as fuck going forward. Ooh, like why? if you're because like the Kawhi shit, the LeBron shit Fucking what's the LeBron thing? The groin. So with the groin, Did remember they when they had that? that remember they had that fucking nurse that went on Instagram and was like, Wow, this guy's such a warrior. He came back, he shouldn't be playing, yada yada yada. Like they hid what his real injury was. Oh you know what I mean? So when team doctors, they're doing what they're doing what's best for the team. They're doing what's best for the owner. And who and the guy who's cutting their checks, which is your Bob Myers, your Rob Palinkas, your whoever the fuck runs the Spurs. And if they're if they're down three one, their dynasty's on the line, they don't know what the fuck they do. They're going to do whatever their boss tells them to do. If you're it's a like, max yo, player, play, you know what you play. do? If you're a max player on your staff, you have a personal doctor. So mm-hmm. let me ask you this question. Should the players union step in? Absolutely. Wait for it. But yes. Mm-hmm. And say the medical staff for each team will be provided by the team, paid for by the team, but it'll be chosen by the players union. Mm. So the players' union will hire a medical staff for each team, which the Lakers will pay for, the Knicks will pay for, but they will be beholden to the players' union. So if you fuck up a player, mm. guess where you ain't getting another job? Mm. Yeah. yeah. There, there might be another way to go around it because, like you guys said, if, the, if they're completely loyal to the Lakers yeah. and their job is to get LeBron back out on the floor, yeah. not get him healthy... You're not going to get the most out of this about out of these doctors for the injuries no. that they have to deal with. I mean, the one thing every that whole team went through and Kerr went through and Bob Myers, they all said there was no way he could re-injure it. He could only uh, uh, strain it more. That's the only risk. There was no Achilles danger. Y'all and believe that's that? That's a team doctor Bruh. thing. That's what I'm See, saying. But when like, it comes to medicine, it's, like, it's subjective. Like everybody recovers differently. They but give like timelines, but, but it's like you, you have Grimes who came back from an Achilles and no one else. So it's mm. like you can't. Put it on the doctor. But if you know it's, it's like, an Achilles hey, injury, that was my suggestion. But he just didn't recover in the but way. But Alex, thought. if you know it's an Achilles injury, don't fuck with that. Mm-hmm. If you have any ink, and if the thing is it's a calf strain, and then he tears his Achilles, I guess it's possible. It's a freak fucking tear of the Achilles for no reason. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't really make sense to me. So to me, it seems like what makes sense is you are out with an Achilles injury. Andrew has sources that say say so say as much, and. All of a sudden, you're playing on an Achilles, and then you tear your Achilles. It's probably the team that ruined your career. Mm. And if I'm KD, I opt in for the full year rehab. Say it's going great, and then I sign a big deal somewhere else. <sighs> so but then up. he takes the chance that yeah they know he's going to leave after, so they can put out reports that the rehab isn't going that well. But I think so at this he, point, they at fuck this point, up his I, chance I take of getting that. the max contract. At this point, I take that chance. At really? this point, I take that chance. You see what it worked out for Kawhi. Kawhi had to eat shit from the Spurs for the entire year. Didn't say nothing. And I guess Kawhi's more built for that than KD is. KD's more he's more out there. He yeah. tweets. He interacts with motherfuckers. Kawhi doesn't give a fuck. He's a robot. Mm-hmm. So, like, he ate the shit for a year. He came back to Toronto. Now he's a hero, yeah. right? If I'm KD, I take that chance. Opt in, rehab, mm-hmm. put it on Golden State's tab, and then next get your own team doctor. And then next year you go and get your big money. Yeah. I mean, that's the smart thing to do. Yeah, I mean, but you but want to the take the chance time. of the team saying that, oh, he's not rehabbing as well. Fuck as well, the then team. you go rehab on your own like Kawhi. Yeah. Kawhi straight left the Spurs Medical Treatment Center yeah. and was or their team was like, nah, I got my own team in New York. Mm. That's what I'm doing. Mm. 
I think even Porzingis did that too. Didn't he like fly back to Lithuania to rehab or fly back to where the fuck he is? Maybe I don't know. I don't it's know. it's it's a tragic thing. And it's 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 I bad for be... a few different reasons, right? It's like one, this game in general is bad for a few reasons. One because the ending, it was so anticlimactic because it robbed Kawhi of his Jordan moment. There's a there's a point at the end of this game where Kawhi scored ten straight points. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It it's was, like he just flipped the switch and we all knew, like, okay, it's over. As soon it's as they over. got the lead, I was actually... Three minutes left. Mm. They were up six. He scores ten straight points. He had the three, a couple hard twos, another big three on Boogie. And it was so fucking dominant. I'm just watching this happen. I'm like, he's the best player in the league. Yeah. This is the way you win a game. This is the way you close out a series. He was hitting those yeah. fucking threes in front of Draymond back to back, and I just thought it, it's it's done. The momentum, the the crowd was fucking rocking, dude. It he was, was stopping nuts. and popping for those little mid ranges. I was like, it was over. Is and then that, once that moving screen happened, and it was it was one point to win the game. Who else do you want with the ball in your hand than Kawhi Leonard? I don't right? understand exactly. why. First of all, Nick Nurse called a timeout when they were up six. I think right. So here's the thing: they're up six. Nick Nurse calls a timeout, and. There, he'll be criticized for that. Yeah, he's but getting killed for that shit. If you remember the play that came after it, so they call the timeout up six. Mm-hmm. I forget exactly how many, much time left. Maybe three minutes left, right? It was about three minutes, yeah. Up six, calls the timeout. They come out of timeout. Kyle Lowry goes pick and roll to Marcus Sol. Marcus Sol gets hammered at the rim. Right. No call. Right. I remember that. They got. The shot they wanted. Mm-hmm. That's right. why you call the timeout, right? It's like, don't get me wrong, you are cooking, and everybody, you know, is it, what is it, Monday morning quarterback, so they're going to mm-hmm. be critical. But like, they got the shot they wanted. He should have gone to the line, had two, he's a good free throw shooter, or he could have made that layup with some contact. That was yeah. a makeable layup yeah. with contact. Definitely. It turns into fast break, either Clay or Steph. Clay hit the first three. three. Clay hits the first three. Mm-hmm. Clay hits the first three. And um, they run Steph off that curl. And then they get and it then back. They tie it up. Here's yeah. what I would say: I don't remember in all the years I've watched basketball a team going on a run and then calling the timeout on themselves. It is a, it is. I was talking to guys after the game, and it is conventional wisdom. You're up six. You know this is a big possession because you lock this down, and that's kind of the game. You mm-hmm. score one more, and that's kind of the game. Why don't we get a good play? Yeah, you let the defense get set, but. You also get everybody on the same page. He did say his, his, his guys looked gassed. For is a it while. conventional wisdom that. against the Warriors? It's conventional basketball wisdom. They're, sure, Warriors don't have their own rule set, yeah. right? It's like, and Kyle knew it too, right? Kyle is a high IQ basket. I love the way Kyle played. By the way, he played great. He yesterday. fucking played his ass off, and I, I'd love to see him play again like that uh, for the rest of the series. But even he was on the same page, right? He goes across half court and Kyle starts looking back at Nurse and Nurse is calling for timeout and Kyle's like, I think we call timeout. Let's just set it up and get one. If that layup goes in, Nick Nurse is a genius for calling that play and then getting a bucket. If it doesn't, how could he call the timeout? Yeah, the, that, I mean, that's I, all. I, I'll, I'll live the with that. You take. I honestly think we're, that, yeah. not, we're not giving enough credit to to, to the Splash Brothers. Man. Bro, they like, did what they do. They were they had no business winning that. At that run, at that point that the fucking Raptors were cooking mm-hmm. and the arena was rocking, like, they have no business. They're they're the only team that wins that game. That has two weapons yep. that can literally have go off for six or nine points in quick seconds like that. They're the only team in the world that can pull that off. Makes me sick. And they did it again. Makes me fucking <laughs> sick. And they both did it. My guy doing what they do. <laughs> right? The other yeah. question I have. <laughs> Yeah, Monday morning quarterback. Why don't you run a pick and roll for Kawhi on Clay, who is their best perimeter defender on the last possession? They let Clay Kawhi go ISO, and I was wondering. And maybe somebody said it, and that's why I was wondering. Uh, but like pick and roll. That's so. I actually think Kawhi waved them off. I so think it was, a, a if you go coming. pick and roll, you run the risk of getting trapped, passing out of the trap, and then getting it picked. Fair enough. That's just, that's the idea, right? Yeah. I think in that position. Kawhi felt, I mean, he just scored 10 straight, right? So there's nobody that he needs to switch on. Mm-hmm. He can get his buckets on Clay. He can get his buckets on anybody. Uh, it's it's really credit to fucking, and once again, Iggy, out of nowhere, makes an amazing play, amazing yep. defensive play. He he had great help defense. He came all the, the way he over. They ran the risk. They ran the risk of giving up that layup because uh, Iggy came to help. From weak side. The weak side help came to get 
guard whoever was down in the post to give up the open layup because that's what happened if they got double teamed. They kicked it back out. They got uh, Kyle Lowry a pretty open shot, and Draymond made a hell of a defensive play he to did. stop it. He so did. it's like you got to give it up for Dre. They made the right play. It's just. They're champions, dog. Like, the Warriors are champions for a reason. Like, they're not just some pretty, like, jump shooter motherfuckers. Like, they make those dirty plays that you need to win at the end of the game. And, like, you don't... When you have championship teams, man, like, you got to cut their head off when you have the chance to. Because yeah. now they're alive. They're going back to Oracle. Yep. They got all the emotion and the momentum behind them to pull and some shit out. they have a narrative. Now they have it. Because <laughs> this is very... And this is very interesting. What will not be in the news this week mm. is the Warriors let KD play when they knew that his Achilles was at risk of popping. Mm. What will be the story is what pieces of shit those Toronto fans are mm. booing a guy who got injured. Mm. It's like, well, why was he even he in the position to get leg. injured? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they're gonna make it they're gonna make KD a hero. He gave everything, gave it all for his team. You fucking pieces of shit. We'll like, find out in July what what KD really thinks. Real talk. <laughs> we'll find out in July what KD really thinks. Real, man, and you know what? You are gonna say it? Yeah, of course. KD is gonna course. say it. Of course, because as much as as much as it makes sense for him to opt in and be petty and have Golden State, you know, pay for that rehab, I wouldn't be surprised if he says, "Fuck you guys, I'm out." Yeah, I'm gonna go rehab where I want to rehab. And Does this hurt the perception of the Warriors within the league for players? He's a big free agent looking at the Warriors. Like like Giannis, there's rumors already kind of starting that maybe Giannis goes to Golden State when he's free, Jesus if KD Christ. leaves. If I'm Giannis, am I looking at that like, you know, I'm kind of similar to built to KD, much more muscle, but like kind of similar. Mm. Do I want to do that? Do I want to risk an injury and then they throw me out there, parade me out there before I'm ready? Who knows, man? I don't I don't know. It, it, it might. That, I think, I think it's worth, I think it's worth, I think it's worth chewing on. I, I do. I think what the real takeaway from this is for players is if you're hurt sit be hurt sit sit just fucking you don't sit. have to be a hero this is a job okay yeah. this is a job and your job is dependent on your physical mm. ability yeah and if your physical ability is hampered for the rest of your life you no longer have a job look at isaiah thomas He's That's about a, to be. Was out it you to text me that? Mm -hmm. He's about to be out the, the exact... fucking league, possibly. He'll be in the big three killing. How many how many of these <laughs> lessons do we need to learn? Uh, he's going to need to learn Chinese lessons. It's different. Uh, it's, like different right? playing ball. it's different because, like, you know, so many times, like, we kind of did the same thing with Derrick Rose, but, like, social media wasn't that crazy back then, so mm -hmm. we don't know the very intricacies of every team doctor. But, like, he being clear to play. And ready to contribute and not hurt yourself are two very different things. A team could clear you to play. But if I don't feel like I could go, yeah. I ain't going. And did, that's what happened with Kawhi and the Spurs. Did you notice did you notice how they worded it? This is how clever these motherfuckers are. He was never cleared to play. Cleared to practice. Hmm. And the no minutes restriction thing. That? The yeah. no is, minutes restriction is, thing is, is is what raises the fucking red flag for me. I'm like, But dog. what is clear to practice, Kaz? What what like clear? You could be clear to practice with you, with a whole cast on your leg. Dog. You could just do layups. Yeah, like practice isn't anything. Jalen Rose was on uh, Get Up talking about how the reason why he didn't see him playing is because they tried to work him out before Game Four. Yeah, and it was basically just like a three on three, and it just wasn't and going. He, right? And KD and quote unquote, he said he punted the workout because he just he just couldn't go. He just couldn't go. And that's the whole thing that raises the red flag for me, dog. Like, not just is it going to affect the, the Warriors and how free agents look at there, but just team doctors in general. I think players are going to take more power back more than ever, especially if you're a max guy, if you're a superstar type player, and say, fuck the team doctors. I'm my own guy. I'm not risking it if I feel like I'm in danger, and, and, and now my bag's fucked up. What do you think happens with the end of the series? Predictions. I still think Toronto wins it because... Uh, to be honest, even when KD was playing, this is one of the few times as a sports fan I've been supremely confident, and it didn't work. Yeah. But like, even when KD was balling, I was like, whatever, they're gonna weather the storm. Yeah. Then when KD went down, I was like, they're gonna win. Yeah. Then and they went down five, I was like, oh shit, they might lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I still kept thinking, Steph cannot run like this. Now the one thing is different is two days off between the next two games. Right. But my feeling is Steph isn't built like LeBron to carry a heavy, heavy workload yeah. night in and night out. He, he can break down. Yeah, it's going to And take... that's what happened. Now, again, it was only one day between games, but between game three and game four. Right. And Bill Simmons actually said this. It was a really brilliant plan from Nick Nurse in game four after Steph went crazy in game three. Just run around everywhere. Frenetic pace mm. up and down the court. And the second half, he'll wear down. 
And that's what happened. In the second half, Steph started missing. He got tired. And there's an extra day of rest, but I tend to think the same thing will happen. Yeah. Cass, what, is your, what are your predictions? I still think the Raptors close it out in the Oracle. I've said Raptors in six for a while, even though people say they go back and forth. No, you said but, Warriors uh, first. Usually. We I have the say, exact time uh, You've been saying all that shit. Anyway, I'll be, I'll I, think the Ra- I do think the Raptors close it out in six. Um, I think that even in Katie's very little... Uh, productivity, all 11 of those points. They needed every one of those points just to squeak by by one point. Not having him, having a whole game to pretty much swarm Steph Curry and make sure he's not effective. I just think it's going to be too much and I think Toronto closes it out Thursday, man. I Yeah, and I think Boogie, something Andrew pointed out, like, I don't think Boogie can go heavy nights back to back. No. Heavy minutes, back to back games. He's gonna I think he's gonna have a worse game. I think he started to fall apart at the end of last game. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, why yeah. he had the the moving screen and mm. like the one goal ten that they uh that they called and like upheld the call, I think it was a bad call. Yeah, I thought but, it was good, but but he he just got tired, I think. Yeah. And he's got a fucking he's coming back from a torn quad and a torn Achilles. And and mind you, he was about to not play. <laughs> like they had, I forgot who they started. They had they started with the with the Hamptons five. Yeah. So Draymond is essentially playing center. Then they threw Kevon Looney out there, who's fucking, who's clavicle or yeah. or whatever the fuck is fucked up. Broken cartilage. Whatever you know what I'm saying? Chest. And and Boogie was sitting there not getting no burn. And then Boogie got out there. And once Boogie got out there before Boogie, I'm like, all right, they're not playing on playing Boogie at all. So, but Looney gets hurt again. Boogie needs a blow, and they just fuck it and threw Boogie out there. And they gave him what they could give him at that point, but to. I think he's gonna come through with that for the rest of the series. Yeah, it's so it's so many injuries that the Warriors gotta yeah. gotta weather. It's so many depth issues. It's like they've seeing Fuck the Warriors. <laughs> no. it's sad about it's sad. Son. It's, it's sad. sad. Like, to, is to sad. make if it to the championship and your whole team, you is know just what? Fucking you know what? I wish down, Andrew so. was here for this. I want to mm. go through every championship the Warriors had. Their Why? first championship was 2015. Mm. Okay. Clay, they're, they're Clay down, said something about this yesterday, but you're right. Go they're with down two one to the Grizzlies, grit and grind Grizzlies. Where are you the fuck down before they got champion confidence? The Warriors, mm-hmm. Mike Conley, arguably their most important player, maybe second to Marcus all the time. Facial fracture doesn't play the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. That's the conference semifinals. Mm-hmm. Conference finals, you play Houston, Harden and Howard in the playoffs. Who gives a fuck? Finals, LeBron, no Kyrie, no Ky- uh, no Kevin Love. Mm-hmm. That's how you get your first chip. They lose the next year. And they blame a one-game suspension on Draymond, which might have been bullshit, but you also forget he kicked a dude in the dick this series before and got away with it. (laughs) And that's why he got suspended this time, because he was a repeat offender. A little dick kick. Then the next year, (laughs) you are down 20 points in the conference finals. To whom? Kawhi Leonard, the guy that's destroying you now. Mm. And Zaza Pachulia, this dirty fuck, slides his foot underneath him, and then... He gets hurt, and they sweep the Spurs. Okay. The next year, you're down 3-2 to the Rockets. Chris Paul playing his ass off. Harden ain't really doing shit. Chris Paul strains his hamstring, and then you win the next two. To find me one championship wow. they didn't win without injuries to marquee players on the other team. Yeah, Clay Thompson said okay. this in the, in the in the press conference after I the game. You. He said, we've been very fortunate to be on the other side of injury luck. Man, fuck for every Thompson time. for being a good sport about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, <laughs> that he came up straight up. He's like, he's like, yo, we've been very fortunate to be on the other side of injury luck, but I think now we're getting it all back. Like You're that not was a direct it all quote. Back. It's one series, you fuck. It's the finals. You just sure. made, you just You're getting 2015 yeah. back. I'd, I'd much. Here's my thing. I'd much rather these injuries happen before you get to the finals because, like, to have that be the defining, uh, uh, the defining factor. In this, it kind of takes it, it makes it anticlimactic. It's like oh, nobody okay. brings it up for 2015. And yes, if we the do. Same people... Every, have you ran into any LeBron fan? Oh, LeBron <laughs> Literally, fans. they all say <laughs> Look, like, Yo, I'm talking about, and we I, went in there with Matthew Dalvadova as the second best player. Like it's a wild because accepted. straight up, they would have won that series. <laughs> yes, yes, it was straight wild. up. He you would have won games, that series. It's like two but games in Oracle. The, when you look at the history of the Warriors, yes, you count them as a all time great team. Mm. Three championships in four years, potentially four out of five. There's no asterisk there. But now you want an asterisk because KD went out? No. There's no asterisk championship. You of all people should know that. I don't think I don't think we should give them an asterisk. I'm just saying as a basketball fan, I'm like, damn. This isn't how it, like Yeah, I just wanted to see a better qu- series. That's a, bro, that like, first this, quarter. The whole playoffs has been fucking amazing. Sure, and then for the sure. finals to be like, yeah, wow. Like, if it's all... in a completely fair world, all these series have been fair series. 2015 is a fair series. 2016 is a fair series. 2017, 2018, all fair. 
in a in a fair. No, I'm not talking about fair on exist. fair. I'm talking so about so to me, they're like, an asterisk dynasty, and I think anybody oh, oh, complaining about you KD is so 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 an asterisk dynasty. You just asterisk dynasty. This would be the one. It's part of the game. Nobody's nobody's gonna put an asterisk on this Warriors dynasty just because. <laughs> Injuries happen. Like if you go back Son, and look at what, everybody, what the Knicks doing? What's your name? You know why Katie well, got hurt? Watch next season. You know why Katie got hurt? Watch next season. Katie thought about going to the Knicks and it ruined his career. <laughs> Even thinking about going to the Knicks ruins your career. It's over. You Listen, can't recover from to that. Be to, all right, to, to take my, That's how shitty the Knicks are. Son, take my sympathy hat off of the Warriors right now to, to calm any Fuck Knicks the fans. Warriors. Sympathy for to the Kim? Warriors? No. They're the reason sympathy he got for hurt. The Knicks. Sympathy for the Knicks. Usually this type of fucked up luck happens when they sign to the Knicks. Usually. Yeah. So as fucked up as it is, as fucked up as it is, Knicks fans, you got a lot of young talent. You're going to draft another good young talent. You're still going to have a shit ton of cap space that you can save for next year. It sucks. You're not getting the best player in the world anymore. But... At least you got the number one draft pick. At least you got the... (laughs) <laughs> Listen, I, mean, I like it. Did you see what RJ Barrett it, said yesterday? It was a suit. Oh. Yo, yeah, yeah, fuck you, Al Gosh. <laughs> you didn't watch any college basketball. It was as soon as he signed RJ Barrett. Losing the fucking Elite Eight or whatever. As soon as he, 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 he closed on his property in New York. I welcome you, my son. As soon as he closed on his property in New York. Andrew, I said, even thinking about going to the Knicks ruins your career. It's true. I said, yo, I said, it's usual Knicks luck. Yeah. But this usually happens when they sign to New York. That's usually what happens. So as as fucked up as it sounds, Knicks fans, you've been in worse positions. What did I tell you, man? I said the Knicks are not getting KD. (laughs) Come on, get the fuck out of here. I said the Knicks are not getting KD. You also said KD's not coming coming back. I said the Knicks are not coming. And he shouldn't have. No, no, no. no. Hold on. First of all, first of all, first of all, I was 100% right about KD not coming back. But still, also, you cannot I re- take I actually credit reviewed for this. the tape. I reviewed the tape. He said he might come back if they go down two games. That is exactly what so happened. exactly what I said was right. Uh, what's it? We're definitely not getting KD next, and we're not going to get Kyrie. I'm right about that. Now You're Kyrie right is going to go to the That's fucking. That's the best thing that could happen to you guys, Brooklyn. Nets. Which is great. I don't want Kyrie. Mm-hmm. Sure, but the Knicks are going to end up getting Chris Middleton and Tobias Harris. Watch. I don't think they're going to sign those guys. I think they save their money. I think they're going to go all in on the kids. Like, I think you spend that money with the assumption that you got a guy like KD coming. Now that you know you don't have to get him a complimentary, like, all-star with him, you fucking chill, you save your money, you work on those kids, you don't have the pressure of, like, oh, we got to get KD, okay, we got to win a championship, okay, we got to do all this shit. The pressure is off the Knicks now. Right. Just do what the fuck you've been doing. Just draft and build. That's it. I don't know what we've built. (laughs) <laughs> look at the Brooklyn built, Nets absolutely. All you gotta do is look across the bridge Nothing. They were shit four years ago yeah. Absolute shit They had cap space problems They had no prospects They had no draft picks Now they are the premier destination in New York And it's crazy that they still rebuilt <laughs> faster than you guys And they rebuilt faster problems. than us Because they, stick, they stuck As much as I don't fuck with the Nets And I'm a Knicks guy through and through They stuck to their plan They developed the guys that they drafted They made, pick, they made smart uh, trades to get more draft picks and they built from within. So, like, you, all you got to do is look across the bridge and be like, hey, it's not all that fucking terrible. You're not going to get KD. Or if you get KD, you're going to get an injured version of him. But you've been in worse positions before. Don't panic. The pressure's off now. You can build, like, a regular competent NBA franchise does and not swing for the fucking dream scenario like Fuck we've always been used to. Come on, Tony. <laughs> Fuck the Knicks, dude. <laughs> Knicks on. fucking suck. We need to turn on the Knicks, dude. We really need to turn on the Knicks. I actually nah, do never, think we need to turn idea, on the never. fucking Knicks. This idea that we're so loyal to the fucking it's Knicks. It's propaganda, we assert dog. everything. It never works. Name a franchise that it's worked for. Name a loyal franchise that has ended up winning again. The Browns. <laughs> They haven't won shit. The Browns were pretty good last year, and they look. But they like haven't won better. shit. They, they haven't played the shit last year. They haven't played shit. They but didn't the, even make you the playoffs. The same, you could say the same thing about the Brooklyn Nets. They haven't won shit. Exactly. But they're on their way. They're also a new franchise. Also, nobody's loyal to them. They have to win so they can get fans. Okay. I'm talking about look at look at LA. So the you second be loyal LA to the starts Nets? losing, the second LA starts losing, those nobody gives a fuck. Mm. They're not a loyal team. There's other shit in LA though. That's say why. what. There's what have you shit. done for is me there lately? Not other shit in New York. This is the thing. We need to have a You're more right. "what have you done for me lately" attitude about our sports teams, so that they do it. some shit for us lately. What have you done for me lately, Knicks? Mm. What have you done for me lately? 
Like, have you seen Star Row on the Knicks? It's the <laughs> same guy from The Sopranos. They can't even get at, like real celebrities to show up nah. at fucking Knicks games. I just wrote the Fortran to that motherfucker they, two weeks ago. What's his name? <laughs> I don't know, remember what was his name on the show. The Whatever, Bobby. Big Pussy or some shit. Bobby from, uh, from, what, from that movie with Jamie Foxx. We can't the driving even movie. name the fucking know, the guy. guys. <laughs> Breaking Bad. The white guy. The guy. Okay, Bad. they got they got um uh, Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul. No. Name? Brian Cranston, it doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> we can't even name Celebrity Row. Dude, Celebrity Row is so sad. They veer over to him. And it's like some guy from SNL you've never fucking heard of, <laughs> right? And then they show a picture of the character he plays, and people are like, we don't watch Yay. that shit. It's embarrassing. Yeah, Cardi goes, it to, is Cardi embarrassing. goes to the bar, uh, Barclays Center now, bro. She Say what? Out, Cardi goes to the Barclays Center now, man. She don't even think me. I don't think she I'm be telling the you, anymore. man, this idea that you support your teams when they're good and bad, it is propaganda from ownership so they don't have to be good. Because if, if we were all honest and we were like, yo, why would I go torture myself? You pay for season tickets to watch your team lose constantly. Thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm not paying for any Cowboys shit until they start winning. I'll watch a game, but I'm not, I'm not putting no money in your pocket directly. No. Fuck Why that. would I do it? The it's, owner sucks. We don't get anything from them. Mm. Like, it's just the weirdest thing. The only thing that they can provide us... Is wins. Yeah. So why would we that. support them when they don't win? And they make it's bad a moves. stupid business. I'm a guy who loves basketball. And it's been a while since I could watch like a young team develop within the Knicks and not just break it up for one of those Hold fucking on, I'm sorry. blockbuster what the trade. Fuck, real quick. What the fuck is it in us to support a losing team? It's propaganda. It's no, no, I understand that. I'm saying Ugh. what what is what is in it for me? But you have to for have me faith. personally. Jesus is, was supposed to come back year after year after year, <laughs> and you just still have faith that maybe one of these days he's coming back. So you're comparing. <laughs> you're comparing. No, 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 no. This Jesus is very good. good. This what is very good. We're gonna get a chip What's one still day. Happen, Jesus? <laughs> we're comparing the we're comparing the return of our Lord and Savior to the Knicks ever being good. And yeah. just it's like Stop Jesus, <laughs> it's not going to happen until we're dead, okay? We're not going to see shit until we fucking die. Gotta have That's faith, what's going to happen. No, I'm not going to have faith. Also, Jesus makes you pay way less for attendance, <laughs> okay? That Jesus does not, Jesus is like, give me 10%, okay? Jesus is not charging $300 a ticket. That is true. So, what about those mega churches, though? Say what? Those mega churches. They take credit cards. Right? Do, yeah. Yo, you give whatever you we'll want. They pass those <laughs> buckets, and you can put a dollar in that shit if you want to. It's up to you. It's like a yoga to the people. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> That's a good reference. Me and my, in my heart of hearts, I can't find myself. I can't find the hearts to cheer for another team. I want to have this conversation. That's I understand why. what you're saying. We understand that it I is have propaganda. A friend. Real quick, Arkash. We understand it's propaganda from from. It's not propaganda. This is just how a business runs, right? You yeah. want to find ways to people support your business. Mm. No different. That being said, we have to truly start asking ourselves: What do we get out of supporting a business that sucks? It's un-American. Do you know what it is? It's socialism. It's communism. communism. It's communism. It, supporting a bad basketball team is collusion with Russia. You <laughs> are a Russian if you support the Knicks. You like the Knicks. You are a fucking Russian. A commie bastard. You made Chernobyl happen. If there is a Chernobyl happening right now on 32nd Street and 7th Avenue every fucking season. And we need to put a stop to it. They need to cover it with that same shit they put over Chernobyl. The radioactive waves have made their way to Golden State. <laughs> it drives me crazy. We get nothing from it. Why do we support you it? You have season tickets. I'm asking this question of myself. <laughs> no. I'm trying to have a come to God moment. I, don't know, I have bro. to re-up these tickets. I don't know. Some bitch named Nancy is gonna pick up the phone. <laughs> I'm gonna ask for better seats, and she's gonna say, "Well, this is the best we can do." No, it's not. <laughs> It's fucking absurd that we should support a shitty team. It's not American. Uh, also, everybody it's, hates... We're not Americans about it. I'm being... A, everybody hates James Dolan. We're Venezuelans. This is Venezuelan. They're eating paper down there. <laughs> they are. They're eating paper. Shouts to Eden. Shouts to Eden. <laughs> Fuck. Yo, everybody hates James Dolan. Why would you keep putting money in his pocket? Starve him out. I mean, he's not going to starve, but if he stops making money for long enough, he'll be like, you know what? Maybe I should sell this thing. 
That's the only way you get rid of bad ownership. Quick update. We have Golden State's Kev- Kevin Durant is traveling to New York for doctor evaluations on his injured right Achilles right now. Can he fly on that thing? I don't know. But he's on, he's on his way to New York Travel. right now. It's better than flying cross country to the Golden State. So By the I time this it. podcast drops, we'll oh, it's an hour away. Yeah. No, he's, he's traveling to New York. Traveling is probably cost. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I am like about to burst a blood vessel over this idea. It just fucking hit me. These fascists, <laughs> <laughs> these fucking fascists. The fan base is the fascists. Or you're like, no, like North isn't Korean the ownership supporters. the fascist? Sure. Or you're like North Korean supporters where you just are so sure, like, I got to keep supporting Kim Jong un. He's doing right by us. No, he's not. Dude, you know what's crazy? Time that to is revolt. such a great fucking reference that you made because you know how the Kim Jong un uh, people, what are they called? North Koreans? Yeah. The North Koreans are like, yeah, Kim Jong un doesn't even have an asshole. Yeah. Like, he doesn't even shit, yeah. right? Like, you. You know what's also <laughs> not believable? That the Knicks will ever be good. The but Knicks are going to get KD. I, I will actually, be- it is more believable that Kim Jong-un does not have an asshole because he is so fat. I don't think he's taken a shit <laughs> since I started seeing him as the dictator of that country. Then the Knicks could potentially be good at basketball. This is... I'm so depressed, bro. Good. Get I'm de- depressed. I'm depressed because it's like... You got to hit bottom, the more The more I think about it, KD getting hurt, like it lets Dolan off the hook. It lets Dolan off the hook. You already, you because, always let Dolan off the no, hook. No, 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 no. But this lets him off the hook more than ever because if KD was healthy and the entire world knew KD wants to come to the Knicks and he still swung and missed on KD and ended up staying in Golden State, the fire around James Dolan for him to sell the fucking team would have been hotter than he ever. He is yeah. Daenerys. Now that Targaryen. KD is hurt, <laughs> mother of dragons, <laughs> there is nothing that can happen to him. He is impervious to fire. He doesn't Kaz. care. Yes, please. Kaz will write an entire article calling Magic Johnson a task. <laughs> this is a guy who's been writing for upwards of a decade and a half. Never once has he written an article saying, hey, Nix, fix your shit before I give a fuck again. You're right. You've had this power. You're yeah, absolutely the whole time. right. You're, You're like the Incredible right. Hulk but in I the know, Last Avengers. But I know this though. But I know the Knicks would be in better shape if they had better ownership. I know this. Where's I'm trying article? to work within the system. Yeah, here. the Knicks—they just rebuild them, man. I'm working. I'm trying to work within the system here, and it's not helping. <laughs> that is how New York would rebuild some shit, Maddie. It's on Union time. The Knicks rebuild. <laughs> Word. It's Word. delayed by four years every year. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm just hurt. I've been hurt. I've been hurt this past like 12 hours. This is whole thing happened. I don't think I've been this devastated for an injury since like it reminds me of like RG3, like the RG3 era when he was on the Redskins, and you know they brought him back quicker than he was supposed to come back. And like he's not even on my team. And I just feel is a for fucking him. idiot, dude. I am. That meant nothing to me. Yeah, I really. Think, and I'm a football I was fan. Not really? at all. I'm a football fan. Let me say two things. That One, guy's mouth is too big. <laughs> that guy's the biggest Y'all fucking mouth I've ever seen in my entire life. So when's the last time an injury really was like, damn? He's not even on the team. Like, damn, that's fucked up. Kobe. I could. Th- I, I'ean, I was, I was Kobe had a full fucking career I was like five good. years. I was still sad. An to me, it's that this, really affected this me. RG3 and Derrick Rose. Those are the only Derek three injuries. Rose. I was yeah. like, Rose. You know what? Yeah. Actually, Kobe got hurt with it ended his career. Torn Achilles. Yeah. yeah. But he was also 37, 38. Yeah. He was up there in age. He was old. Yeah. You guys want you guys want a little little scoop? What's the scoop? Well, this is what I think. This is what I think is going down. I think there's a little power struggle in L.A. uh, between Kobe and Magic Mm. for who's going to own the Lakers. Really, no. I think there's a chance that the buses could sell. And I think that's what Magic and Kobe want to happen. To be in? Now, sorry? You saw it to be in? I don't understand. Kobe Bean. The son of the Lakers to Kobe? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, Kobe Bean Bryant. Yeah. Uh Okay, this is what I, this is. This is a little speculation. I don't have anything that can confirm this specifically, but I've heard little whispers. Kobe and Magic both want to buy the Lakers together. Ne- no, 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 oh. separate. 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 Oh, okay, competition. Now, neither of them can afford it because both of them are broke. When it really comes to like owning, <laughs> they're a, not wealthy. They're not. They're not rich. They're rich to us, but they're not like really rich. Like wealthy people laugh at their fortunes. Mm. So, but. There is a company that has the first right of refusal if the Lakers ever choose to sell. That company is going to need a face for the team. So you will have a minority ownership, but you will be a owner 
similar to like Jay Z and the Nets, Jay-Z, probably Michael owning Jordan. a much bigger percentage of the team yeah. than Jay Z. Jay owned like 05 percent, similar to when Jordan first bought it with the Wizards. Right. Yeah. So uh, apparently, some people believe that this Palinka meddling with Magic is actually Kobe. Kobe's doing, mm. and Palinka getting Magic out of there opens the door. For Kobe. Little finger in this whole thing. Kobe yeah. finger. Kobe finger in it. <laughs> Kobe finger in it, bro. Kobe finger in it is better than Kobe. No, never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. get the hotel room treatment. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's 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 a theory. We'll see how that actually plays that. out. But that's a theory. So much. Magic alluded to that, though, when he was on ESPN. Did he? Yeah, like he was talking about possible people who would be open for purchasing the team. And he mentioned Kobe, he mentioned himself. Like, he alluded to that. I just think they don't want to do it together, or at least Kobe doesn't. Kobe's like, I don't need a partner in this. No, they're the, they're the two alphas. They're the two alphas. And Magic, yeah, anyway, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Who knows exactly yeah, what I was happens. actually about to break out a little bit. I got to... Well, I think there's actually a good time to... Uh, what, how, how long are we at right now? An hour. Because I think this is actually a good time that we break up into the uh, Jeremy Piven conversation. You know, we we spoke about obviously the finals. Yeah. Um, before we bust into that, I just want to say that uh, this weekend I'll be in. Uh, no, no, we got all uh, this weekend. Some shows, some Mad Door shows. Or real quick, let me just say, San Francisco, man, and Ann Arbor, Michigan, unbelievable, man. What? I mean, so cool. Thank you guys so much for coming out. It was just crazy, and the reason why. It's so crazy is because Ann Arbor, Michigan is like the Austin of Michigan, right? It's like the super liberal college town of a conservative spot. And I love it when comics come to my shows to watch. And even when the comics are on the shows, they're like, yo, your crowd is amazing. I'm like, what exactly you mean? I know what they mean. I'm like, no, but like they're down for jokes. They're like not sensitive. They're not like ooing. Yeah. And then, and they're all like, I mean, this is like Ann Arbor. You know, mm. you can't joke about anything over here. And you guys were going crazy. And the same thing with San Francisco. San Francisco is super sensitive. Super city, sensitive. Super, super, super progressive. And the comics were like, yo, your crowd is amazing. You can tell dark jokes, this, that, the other. And it's like, we've curated this shit for years. We basically for years told people get on board or get the fuck out. This is what we're going to do. And I promise you that we have the best crowds in comedy right now. The most diverse crowds, the best crowds, and the ones that are willing to let you know us go the fur- furthest with the jokes. And um, it's just an amazing thing to happen. Amazing thing for other people to see as well. Like when you get to see these comics react. Like even that kid, the Chernobyl extra. Son. There's this kid. About him, so. Yeah, he looked like an extra from Chernobyl <laughs> on the show. And even him afterwards, dude, he was coming up and he was just like, dude, it was just great, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it was just, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I'm just really proud of what, we, uh, what we've what we been able to put together. And and I got to and I gotta say thank you so much, man, because I've realized this, what happens at all these shows, there's always people who go, hey, man, I'm a huge fan, and I brought these five people, and they had no clue who you were, you know, but they had a great time, whatever. And that's how it spreads. I realized that's how I've gone from a venue that seats 200 to a venue that seats 400. Mm. Right. It's just by people bringing their friends, and mm-hmm. I'm so grateful. And I know there's people right now listening to this like, yo, I'm bringing some friends to the show this weekend. Thank you. You guys are the influencers. You guys are the difference makers. You guys will take, you know, a comedian or, or a musician or or anybody in entertainment from one level to the next. It's that simple. It's like everything you put in your group texts and your, your you know group chats, all that kind of stuff. So thank and you, the man. Discord. The Discord too is live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank Shout y'all, man. That, the man. Discord was in the building, man. You guys been fucking murdering it. So anyway, I just was so appreciative, man. You all sold out the merch the first fucking day. We almost sold out all the merch. Fashion. Oh, it, it, no, the fashion the videos are popping. Yeah, I really want to be Fran one of those videos. Hot. We gonna do it. We gonna do it. I want to have it with everybody, man. And y'all can re- recreate them. Go for that shit, man. And and you know f- the fashion challenge. Go for it. But uh. But dude, it was so crazy. Like there was a feeding frenzy for the merch because yeah. the fashion videos, everybody knows about <laughs> yeah. the merch. Yeah. So an, an, we, we sold out. Some we brought merch for Ann Arbor and Chica- and San Francisco. We were almost sold out after Ann Arbor. Yeah. Mm. We had a few things left for the first day 
of San Francisco. We were sold out at the end of the first day. Wow. wow. Dude, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Massive. Massive shit. It's unbelievable. So shit has been crazy. Shit anyway, is hot too. This weekend, come check us out, Indianapolis, uh, Helium. Then next weekend, we're going to be at... Uh, where are we at next weekend? Liberty Township, I think, uh, Cincinnati. And then the weekend after that, Denver. And then that Sunday, uh, we'll be in Houston. And then the Andrew Schultz for any more tickets, uh, dates, et cetera. We're adding some new new cities, um, some very cool, exciting things to share with you. But go get those tickets right now. And don't forget about the New York, Chicago, uh, Toronto, and Boston shows that are all up there available as well. Those are some big ass theaters. Let's go sell them out. Got you some guys? things to plug. Yeah, Talk. this weekend, Atlanta, Georgia, Masquerade. We got Waka Flock of Flame uh, headlining at Duce Palooza in Atlanta. Uh, there's a little bit of tickets left, so make sure you go to DucePalooza.com slash tickets to get those. The week after that, uh, we'll be in Los Angeles, June 22nd um, at the Belasco Theater. Get your tickets at DucePalooza.com. And Essence Fest. We will be in New Orleans July 5th at the House of Blues. Um, you know, we got a lot of lot of special guests for that one coming out. And it's a special start time, too. It starts at 11.59 p.m. It starts at midnight. So as soon as Essence Fest Day 1 is over, hop over to House of Blues. We're going to be doing that until 5 a.m. So get a lot of sleep or, or just don't sleep at all. And uh, this Thursday, I'll be making my debut on SNY's The Thread hey, at 5 p.m. Hey. I'll be uh, a panelist Corporate on there. Cash. So, you know, I'm getting my sports talk on over there for about a half hour. So if you got SNY if you're in the New York area on Verizon or Comcast or, or Spectrum, whatever, tune in there. It should be a, a good show. And, um, yeah, all that good shit. I'm good. Yo, so check it. Real quick, just because we're doing this on the anniversary of the flu game, I remember we were having a conversation. I don't know if it was on the Patreon or if I was on if it was on this, but uh, and I was talking about how maybe uh, Steph was poisoned. Yeah. So apparently, what Grover said, Tim uh, Grover. Yeah, Tim Grover said yeah, that. Yeah, oh, you're right. I forgot this. Yeah. So Tim Grover said uh, the you know the rumor was that Mike was out drinking late and then he was yeah. really hungover and that was a flu game. But what Tim Grover, who was Michael Jordan's trainer, said was that he had Mike ordered a pizza at like two a.m. Yeah. To his hotel room, and they thought it was weird that five guys delivered it. <laughs> Not five guys like yeah. like the burger, but five, like five human different humans. human beings delivered the pizza. And then within like the next couple hours, he was like throwing up all over the place, couldn't sleep. <laughs> they rubbed his yeah. dick on the pizza. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> so they pulled. <laughs> Poison that motherfucker, that Mormon's poison Mike, bro. Oh, no, and then he dropped 38. <laughs> <laughs> legend. God Fucking damn. legend, bro. Anyway. Oh, I gotta break out. Anyway, yeah. So uh listen, guys, without further ado, we have um Jeremy Piven. We chop it up. It's a very interesting conversation, touching on all forms of his life, career, what we've all got going on, get into comedy. He's pursuing stand up right now, and um I really hope you like it, man. Let us know how you feel. Thank you all so much for supporting this. And then we'll see you over at the Patreon, man. I love you all. We're appreciative. Keep it tight. Peace, sir. We got a very special guest. Very special guest. A very, we've fan. had a lot of special guests it's recently, been, man. Been, it just keeps on getting better. We're on a ride right yeah. now. I think Things we really good. are. Yeah. Um, this guest, I'm going to give you a good intro because I think that you happen to accomplish something in television that is very rare. I can only think of one other time that's been done mm. where... A a side character becomes the main character. And the only other time I can remember it being done was Dwayne Wayne in a, a different, different world. world. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking great reference. Well, that's a very strong great reference. Great reference. reference. Okay. And that only happened because Lisa Bonet got pregnant. But I also think Didn't it happened because that. it was straight. He bodied that role. He, so we started watching for... Yeah, yeah it was for the show. The first season was... I'm like... I would, Different world, Stan Loki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the first season was not good. Wait, it was like well, all I'm integrated. so confused. Was this? Well, let me introduce you, bro. Let me introduce okay. you right now. We're, we got Jeremy Piven Sorry, in the I building. Got the legend, so, Jeremy. The legend. Piven. Now, some of y'all yes, know him sir. as Ari Gold from Entourage, and it was that Ari character, which I think initially starts as this side character, and then you found the series kind of wrap around you. Yeah, yeah, but that that to me is a metaphor for for all of our journeys and the way that. You know, it's interesting. When I started that role, I was 37 years old. Right. I won the Fresh Face of the Year Award. There was nothing fresh about my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally. I, I was 40 mo movies into the game. Yeah. Um, I was starring in, in shows and producing and blah, blah, blah. And just let this be a lesson to you in the way that this thing came along and it was one scene in the pilot. You know what I mean? And it was like, look, e even my representative said, why, why would you do this? You're get you know we have opportunities to produce shows and do the lead and blah 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 and you have to put 
your ego aside and all the preconceived notions of where you think you should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea who I think I am? No, it doesn't matter. Bars. What's the best show? What's the best opportunity? Where are you going to do your best work? Where will it be seen in the best light? And HBO had, you know, Sopranos and Sex and the City and all these great shows. And, and, that, and, and, and I knew that Wahlberg's life would be fascinating. And I knew there was a real drama E turtle. There's a real entourage there. Right. And there's a real Ari. And so Ari I knew. Ari Manuel, right? Ari Manuel, yeah. yeah. Um, who, I mean, you guys deal with sports as well. He's big in the sports yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And he's crushing the game. And, and I knew that if we did it right, um, that w we would capture people's attention because people all want to know about the back. That's why this show does well. Of course, people want to know why the, the what the, about the backstage life yeah. of sports, entertainment, everything. So, how pissed was Adrian Grenier or <laughs> E? The guy, what's the guy whose name who plays? E? I don't even know his name. Uh, uh, Good uh, guy. What's his name? Um, What's the guy's name who played Damon's? E? Damon's wait, hold on. Somebody's Jerry brother. Ferrara. No, yeah. not, no, not Jerry. Matt Damon's Jer brother, Kevin Dillon. Kevin no, Kevin Dillon. E, the redhead. Oh, uh, Kevin Connolly. Kevin, Kevin Connolly. Connolly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Bro, I thought he was one of the hobbits for so long. <laughs> I kept on mixing <laughs> him up with Rudy. the other Game of Thrones. Oh, fam, I thought that was but that's Rudy. Rudy. That's, that's that is Rudy. Rudy. He's yeah. not Rudy, is he? I know they're not Rudy. None of us are very tall. Let's just let's get that out of the way right now. I'm trying to breed up right now. I'm looking for a woman with height. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? A better hairline. <laughs> a vertical something anything let's go no listen they had um, to be tight no no yeah. you have one scene in the pilot and by the let's say second third season you're the main storyline look uh, you know it's it, it isn't my concern i'll tell you what what doesn't concern me yeah other people's salary yeah mm -hmm. um other people's expectations disappointments right um, You're going full Kawhi the, Leonard on us right now. <laughs> yeah, no, hold on. no, no, seriously, seriously, because because I, you know what? If I I don't want to know what anyone else makes. It's not my business, right. man. Right. You know what I mean? It really isn't. I'm not just saying. I'm not, I'm just like I'm just gonna keep it real right now. I have to. Yeah. You know, I have no one, no other way. This isn't me trying to be seen in any way. Right. This is just who I am. So I have no idea what their perception of me was. I have no idea what anyone made. No resentment? There's no jealousy? You know what, man? That's, that's, listen, if, if anyone was to be jealous, you know, it's like, where does that come from? That, you know, that's the manifestation of insecurity in a lot. Of, we're we're going to go really deep right now. We're it's artists, man. Yeah. We're insecure, yeah. yeah. bro. We're yeah. yeah. insecure. Well, it's 100%. Again. We're listen, not begging for validation because we you. feel so yeah. good about listen, ourselves. Listen, I like the Ayanna fix my life answer you're giving us right now, but I need to know, <laughs> were they jealous or not? <laughs> they were jealous, bro. I still listen. call him the Hobbit. <laughs> that's how you know they're jealous, bro. Listen, he, let me just tell you how, how crazy the world works. All right, go. Right now, Kevin Connolly, who you refer to, Mm -hmm. is an incredibly prolific director yes. who we would all like to hire us. Yes. So what I'm saying is, you know, before you throw those stones, my yeah. man, <laughs> and I've seen your stand up and you're a killer. Thanks, That's man. why I'm here. Appreciate it. Because I've watched I've watched your stuff and you're just you're inspiring and you're doing your thing and one of the watch this transition. One of the great things about stand up <laughs> Is that you get to write your own story? Media trained. Is <laughs> <laughs> it the first rodeo? Pop, pop you can tell. Is the days of underwear. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. look at you. You you're in a in an arena where you don't. It's like you look at Ricky Gervais, and he basically says these things like, "Look, man, I don't care if these people hate me. Fuck uh, you, I money. write my own stuff. Fuck That's you, so money. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. you do your own thing. You don't need to be okayed it's by fuck you a art. producer it's not even fuck or you a money. studio or anyone. As you said to me off camera, yeah. you know, it's supply and demand. You, you're good. You bring the people in. You eat." You you and and that's what I love about this game. It's like it's Stand so up. it's so real. There's more, dude. I admit when you leave the acting world where you're auditioning and and you go into the stand up world where you have for the first time a little bit of uh, control in what happens that weekend. Isn't it a little bit intoxicating? Yeah, it, it, it completely is. It, it, it's it's a lot of things. It's intoxicating. It's addictive. It's it's terrifying. Um, Why terrifying? It's terrifying because I, I, I mean, you have to understand. I, I haven't been doing it very long, but my learning curve is strong because I've been on the stage since I was eight years old as an right. actor. So I've got forty years on the stage. Mm -hmm. So I'm very comfortable, and it's my home now. You know, how do I dig deep every day? Sit with guys like you, um, and just you know, in, I'm in I'm in graduate school. Learn. 
put my ego aside, talk to everyone that's featuring, ho- hosting, whatever. Right. I'm, d- I'm shooting a documentary about it. Good. You know, so I'm, I'm learning at the speed of light. And people, it's so it says a lot about you that the first question that any of you didn't have is how long you've been doing stand up. Yeah. And there's something about stand ups, and I get it. And yeah. you're, you're so protective of your space. Yeah. And I get it. Yeah. Because you've had to grind forever. Yeah. But the reality is, if I told you the exact amount of time I did stand up, it wouldn't match up to what you're going to see because I have so much respect for the game. That, that, yeah. that was my next question. I mean, like, stand-up is, is a lot like like rap music. Like, right. you know, if somebody's as popular as you who has played such an iconic role on TV comes and sees Andrew go do stand-up, a lot of times people aren't that inviting because, like, oh, here comes this guy. Is, well, did you get any of that when you started getting your stand-up You're going to get or, hate, right? Yeah. You, 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 know, know, you, yeah. You, you, you know what? You know what's interesting is that and again, I'm not just saying this. I swear to you, it motivates me. Mm. It it just there's nothing better than, you know. One time, and I, I I you know like I, taking I, Kevin listen, Connelly's I won't say the, job. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> taking his pages. Every time you open that script, you're like, oh, he only got four pages. I got him. <laughs> Let me make fun yeah. of this Chinese guy more. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, do, you, do you know that? I'll tell you. What, I'll tell you. I'll blow your mind even further about Entourage really quickly. Yeah. Everything that I said was written so that think about how improvisational it looked and I'm not celebrating myself and I guess I am. Um, so, it, it, but it's our job to make it. your mind for a second. It, yeah. I'm amazed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean by that was, yeah. what I mean by that was, it's, it's just simply our job to make everything look improvisational. Yeah, and, that's, how, and, that's what it felt like, bro. And, and that's what you do. Yeah, yeah. So, in order to do that, if you don't own the lines... And if you don't own them to the point where you can then be totally present in the scene and not have to be reaching for a line or whatever, if you're totally present and you're really playing off the other person and you and have, you have all the specifics of all that stuff, what you need, want, fear, blah, blah, blah. And if you can be totally present, then you're, that's why everyone was like, oh, you were just making that up. It was a documentary. It's like, uh, no, that was, that was yeah. written. It wasn't a documentary. Yeah. It was written. And there's someone there literally looking at the script. Making and if I, sure yeah, man, it. I'm Jewish. Uh, you and it's, it's like, all the it was like my bar mitzvah. It's yeah. like, you know, you, you know what I mean? Every day was my bar mitzvah. You want to go to heaven? You better get these bars right. <laughs> I um I wrapped my Haftorah portion because I was one of the only white boys growing up. So and explain for people who don't know when you're oh. when you're. Bro, too, I don't know what the fuck. So you're during your bar mitzvah, about. okay, okay. Yeah. you you got um, you have to take part of the Old Testament. I think yeah. everybody gets their own little piece. Yes, yeah. of, the, of the Torah, right? Of the Torah, right? And they call it the Haftorah portion. And and for those of those um, the Gentiles out there, the about, goyim, the goyim. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. See, he's, a, he's an annoyingly cultured person. Like, I like you it. think he's just ignorant? No, no, no. no. no I never. He'll say something. I'm like, yo, how the fuck do you know that? No, <laughs> you, you can't. You can't. Been to a lot of bar mitzvahs. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not go. surprised by any of this. Yeah. So it's a rite of passage for young men and women, bat and bar mitzvahs, and um, I, I got up there and and I was a terrible student, man, because. People don't realize that it's it's a very difficult language. You're 12 years old. You're a yeah, child, and right. you're learning Hebrew. Yeah, right? right. I wanted to be the first Jewish linebacker, you know, but there aren't any five foot nine linebackers anywhere, <laughs> anywhere, literally. Yeah. So I was very much, you know, a delusional kid. And my rabbi said to me, "You're terrible. You're not going to make it." And I was like, "What does that mean?" You know. And so he's like, "Look, I heard that you can." freestyle and you can rap and i was like really? what? i was like what he said because you have to understand when you do your haftorah portion it is the weirdest uh cadence it, it just it's so strange you've never heard anything like it. it it's the hardest thing you could even wrap your mind around do you remember Plus some it, of it? so so i had to wrap mine so yeah, i was like what we're talking never read yeah he shit my own nightmare man tavi out alone till the sweat runs off my balls <laughs> <laughs> Ah, ski, 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 ski. <laughs> my neck, my back, my pussy. Yeah, no, there was no pussy. There was no. You see, that's that's another thing I heard about you. I my heard neck, you... my back, everything's covered from the head down. What is the? Ah, uh... oh, fuck, man. Uh... <laughs> that's so see, that's the comic in you. That's the comic in you. I, I love it. I gotta go for it. I love it. You I gotta go for it. Shoot, bro, I gotta bro. go for it. Shoot a shoot, no, no, bro. My shoot neck, my back, yeah. cover your yarmulke and your back, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's writing it down. I, yeah. He's writing it down. I like, I, 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 know, I like where you were going with that yeah, for that tag. Notes. Is it, I came to take notes. I always take notes. <laughs> anyway, well, man. Yeah. Um, 
knowledge fit. No, go fit. ahead. No, no, keep go going. Ahead. So yeah, so it, we're just in this 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 uh, interesting time. I'm glad to have you here because I thought. I don't want to harp on entourage too much, but it was one of these things where uh, I often think about characters that I see where people fall in love with the character so much that they, they create an expectation of that character yeah. for who you are. So, yeah, right? Right. That's, that was so, the like, one first mindfuck because like, so, you're like, so that character to me boom so, like, so when you see him it's, this, so like, it's like <laughs> I'm like alright this is, this is different I, well, no, so like so here's the thing right funny. it's like Andrew Dice Clay right yeah Dice is not Dice Dice what is a Jewish kid from Brooklyn right. that turned into Dice right. because people kept treating him like this character he invented. Right. Right? Even like Ross from Friends. I don't know Ross, but mm. he's Ross. Right? <laughs> so it's like you became so synonymous with this character. Do you feel like this expectation when you're on stage to be and on stage. Well, I, I address, or even also yeah. I, I address it right away. I'd love love for you to see my set because that's what the last thing you want to do is see another guy's set. No, <laughs> but I'm no, actually he's, he's curious. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd yeah. be awesome. One of the first things I, I, I have to address that right away, you know, and talk about the misconceptions and and then, you know, be self deprecating and show different situations in which people they just can't separate the two. And which is which, by the way, is t is totally fine with me and funny. But once I tell the audience how absurd it gets, it's really it's kind of comical because you know I had a dude come up to me in Jersey. He's like, "Bro, by the way, bro, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big fucking I'm, I'm a big fucking fan." I go, "Thank you, brother." He goes, "I'm a douchebag because of you." <laughs> yo, yo, and, that and is, like, I grew up, uh, I grew I'm up like, on bro, entourage. That's my legacy, really. Yeah. Oh, that's, absolutely, well, that's, that's yeah. a good question. Yeah. I, had a, I had a couple questions about that. That character's so magnetic and big, but like. One question is, off stage, yeah. people not only expect Ari Gold, especially in that time, but they reward you for acting like that. So if you give them what they want to, I would assume <laughs> if you can just like be a little mean, be a little no, dickhead. No, no, be, no, no, no. Here's, here's, the, here's the most fascinating thing about what you just okay, said. Okay, yeah. okay. They may want me to be Ari Gold, but the reality is if I walk out of this door and I'm a reactive asshole to people... <laughs> I will get that detention slip. I will be in page six tomorrow. Mm. So the mm. duality is that's fascinating is they think they want me to do it, but they don't actually want me to do it. Did you have to and if I do it, believe me, I'm the bad guy. Did you have you to learn that the hard way? You can't way, be or? a hot. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Wait, what happened? What happened? Oh my God! How much time do you have? Well, I mean, Plenty. look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the only I mean, way I get paid. So I'm here. I mean, look. I'll, I'll just I'll just give you one example mm. that'll kind of illustrate my point. And by the way, I you know I'm just a stage actor from Chicago. So, you know, by the by the time this hit, but by, by the time Entourage hit, I was a grown man who had been, you know, working as you know a journeyman actor that had been working steadily my whole life. Right, mm -hmm. so then this thing hits, and I never expected, because you know I just didn't I didn't think it through. I didn't think, okay, you're going to be in people's living rooms, and it could be for multiple years. They may, my mom saw it coming, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. They may tie you to this character, and then they may vilify you mm -hmm. based on the authenticity of the character. Of the character yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. I had no. It's interesting because he's such a departure from who you played before. I was actually right. a fan. Whenever I saw you in a movie or something, I'd be like, "Yo, I love this guy." Yeah, thank same. you. But keep yeah, going. Yeah. What's funny is I never played a a, a, a character with any power yeah. until then. I was playing, you know, Nick Cage's best friend, Cusack's best friend, schlumpy, you know, plus ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know. And and then that, that character was what, when white guys could play those roles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're off camera waiting yeah. in the car. <laughs> you guys need anything? I'm gonna make some sandwiches. <laughs> we had a good run, bro. I'm a we closeted a gay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Every character I audition for is closeted gay. Mm. There you go. If if I'm not straight gay, like completely out of the closet, uh -huh. it has to be closeted gay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, go back to what you were saying. So you have this experience. So I'm I'm smash cut to like I'm with my mom and we're uh we're at a restaurant and we're hanging out and we're and we're leaving and you know there was a bunch of paparazzi outside. My mom was very confused by it and it was overwhelming and whatnot. So we had a great time. And it's always good I, to this day, you know, I, I talk about this on stage that I run lines with my mom 
And <laughs> just imagine, like, you know, everything yeah. I said is already going. I said to my mom's face, yeah. which is insane. So I do a whole bit about that. Uh. But um, so we had a great time. And then in the paper, it said that I was yelling at my mother so badly <laughs> that people had to get up and leave. And I'd been banned for life from the restaurant. And my mom called me up and goes, what did I miss? And I'm like, mom, you didn't miss anything. You were with me the whole night. And my mom is from another generation. She was from, she's from a time when, you know, there had to be a kernel of truth yeah. right. in order for them to publish it in the paper. Right. We're talking about a woman that's, you know, you know, you know, seen it all. Sure. And so she, she had no reference for this type of insanity the fake news. where they can just literally go. Yeah. And so I call, I, I, my buddy was, you know, runs the restaurant mm -hmm. and he, he wasn't there that night. He rang up the staff and they're like, and it said, I've been banned for life. And he called up the staff and staff was like, Oh no, no, we love Jeremy. He's a, uh, <coughs> you know, he's great. He was here with his mom last night. And so he called up the paper and said, "No, no, we're, we're, you know, I run the, I run the restaurant. This never happened. That's my guy. He's, he's not banned for life, blah blah." Yeah. blah. And they said, "We have reliable sources." He goes, "I run the I restaurant." The, so my point the lies is, already made it, made it away <laughs> around the world before the truth even puts his pants on. That's what Charlemagne says. Always all the say, time, yeah, man. the the, and, the lie. Uh, no one believes the truth if the lie is more interesting. Yeah, that's heavy. That's heavy. But Martin Luther King said, "No lie can last forever." So take that motherfucker. Damn right, I like that shit. There we go. Damn, he trumped my black guy. I was like, Charlamagne, yeah, Martin Luther King, motherfucker. MLK, bitch. No, um, so that was that was a trip to just go. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, the the game is rigged. Okay, this is interesting. And um, and you know, so it's been interesting. Does Hollywood make a a? A decision like uh, I hate this like Illuminati version of Hollywood or like <laughs> politics that we put out there but like sometimes it seems like I, I, I'm one of these guys where like sometimes my reputation precedes me right and my reputation hasn't been the best right so and it's always poor amongst people who I've never met mm -hmm. right <coughs> so anytime I hear bad things about somebody that I haven't met I give them the benefit of the doubt right because I know what it's like to be that guy per se. Mm. But do you think that there are people in Hollywood or these different industries, industries that make a decision about you and then kind of coalesce behind that? Absolutely. Like a revisionist history, if oh, you will. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, and, you know, but that's been going on forever and I, and I get that. Um, and yeah, whenever I sit down with someone the, and meet them, the, the response is always, oh, okay, that... That's not what I expected. Yeah. I'm never what You're they thought. You're not that ba bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm just a literally a journeyman actor from Chicago that's been doing my thing and you know, um I like to work hard and you know, um sometimes that can stir things up in people and and oh, man, am I not perfect? And I've had some some bad moments, but um but yeah, it's it's a trip, but it's it's your job to not focus on how you're perceived, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and it's easier said than done, especially when it's being done, you know, on a on on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's not easy, but if you can think of it like, okay, well, what a great gift, because I need to rise. I need to realize that that's not real. Mm -hmm. I know what's real. Yeah, I have to hold on to the truth. Yeah, and instead of you know, being a slave to your fears and your trying thoughts to put out and the fires and all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And, and trying to be loved by pe people that you don't know. Just try to be the best person you possibly can. And, and yeah, there's a Kaz uh, brought out a great point about LeBron James. Right, we were talking about LeBron James. Out, he has this media platform. Right, mm -hmm. and he's the first athlete that we've seen take their narrative. Or take control of their own narrative, yeah. right? So so easily back in the day, especially like in Hollywood, it's like, okay, we don't like this guy anymore. We're writing this guy off or this girl. We're writing this guy off. And then you can't do anything because there was no Instagram. There was no Twitter. You didn't have your own outlet. And now with social media and the extreme version is mm -hmm. what LeBron has done with Jeff Bezos has done with the Washington yep. Post. Like You, you can basically, literally put out your own story. Yeah. It is called your Instagram story. So mm -hmm. anything that comes out, anything that comes out about you, right? you can combat in real time if you need to and write that ship, right? And I think the most powerful thing ab about being a comic is that if you can do something with humor, you win. Mm -hmm. There's no tool more powerful. So say whatever you want about me. If I can make that thing funny, it doesn't matter how scandalous it is, 
you lose, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, you can journalists see it. and us both use words for a living. We're both trained with words, but Facts. our words are trained to be funny, and that sword is just sharper. Medicine in the in in, in the candy. Yeah, yeah. You attract more bees with honey, man. Yeah, you attract more bees with honey, and humor is the honey right there. And so. you can see LeBron, like even LeBron not being in the playoffs this year, like he's really upticked the content that he's putting out. Fun family stuff. Taco Tuesday. There is that video Tuesday, going on. Tuesday, the like, fucking uh, the shop plant. and shit. The shop, like, all, all the shows, awesome. everything yeah. is one hundred percent planned. It's and like people okay. give him shit about it, but I'm like, yo. Oh, like, if doing? I had that fucking power, hell yeah, I want to control my narrative. Hell yeah, I want to put out shit that I want people to see. Especially if I'm that big and powerful as mm-hmm. an athlete. Like, why wouldn't you? So uh, that's you know? the shit that we got to do now because there's going to be situations where, you know, a a version of our, of our path might be a little bit more blurry or misrepresented. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, do, I do know what you're saying. And... Uh, yeah, I I would like nothing more than to be understood. Mm. You know what I mean? That that would be fantastic. That's on you. That's the beauty of what you're doing yeah. now. <clears throat> but like that's stand up is literally telling your own story. It's not somebody else writing the words. Entourage, everybody wrote every word you said. Yeah. Testament to you for making it seem like you just hate everybody. <laughs> <But> <laughs> stand up, you right. now you can explain yourself exactly like Andrew said with humor, and then everybody walks or, away believing that. Or with confusion. Like yeah. look, Chappelle did it better than anybody else, right? Facts. Like Chappelle created mystery, right? I'm gonna go to South Africa. If you don't think Chappelle knew every single step of what he was doing this is a brilliant man Mm -hmm. right he understands the value in mystery he created mystery he created exclusivity he he created scarcity right instead of screaming to the you know mountaintops where he's going to be he's like i don't know where i'm going to be i'm just going to pop up randomly and then once he started putting out dates people are like wait we have the opportunity to see him Mm -hmm. oh my god right and and then he's like off whites exactly he's like a hot sneaker right so he was hype beast boom and then when he puts out the special where he alludes to what happens with comedy central he doesn't say exactly he just does a kind of metaphor for what it was that the pimp the pimp uh diaries all all that oh my gosh it was great and everybody is like hanging on you know every drop of his last word and immediately comedy central becomes this big bad boogeyman and he is the, the the hero's journey, if you will, that has ended up being victorious because he made that fifty million back and some, right? But here's a perfect example of a guy who took a, you know took control of his own story. It was very easy if he just bowed out for him to just be that crazy guy that went to Africa. And yet, if he didn't come back with his sword as sharp as it was, if he didn't come back with truly no fear and illuminating what's going on right now in our culture where no very few men if any are willing to speak that truth Mm -hmm. then then doesn't matter that he's being secretive because if he didn't come back with that game that is just a rarefied air you know what i mean where he's talking about stuff that it's very difficult for men to approach and he's like look here's the way it is sorry guys and that was the beauty of it when he first came back like the first special wasn't that great and he talks about it in the second special how the first special wasn't that great and you know all the people seeing the jokes like oh my god we can't believe he's talking about it. it's like bro this is this is Chappelle. which one this is what he does. Spin? not not age of spin. Uh, the the first the first netflix special that came out yeah that's age of spin i thought that shit was amazing no nah, the, there was one the one that came after that that and the and the um, i forgot the, the one bird, was just, the uh, bird, bird, bird bird revelation age of spin, bird version, yeah. bird revelation. deep in the heart of texas See, to me, yeah. Yeah. To me bird the, the bird revelation is that's that's oh, brilliant. brilliant. It's fucking incredible. You know, that's that's one for the ages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that you just put in a time capsule and go, okay. That's his live and smoking. Yeah. yeah. I think he did that Next. very intentionally because he mm-hmm. talked about live and smoking. Mm-hmm. I don't know where Give it context was. context of live and smoking. So but live and smoking. So I don't remember where I saw Chappelle talking about this, but he said his favorite comedy special was live Richard Pryor live and smoking. It's yeah. from like 1970, whatever. And he goes, honestly, he bombs the entire special. Yeah. But at the end of the special, they show his set list from that special. And a lot of those bits go on to be classic Richard Pryor bits. And he yeah. said, that's my favorite special of all time. And I think Bird Revelation is his live and smoking. Yeah, I mean, this is my this is my life, and, and he had to earn it, right? It's yeah. like no, not no new comic could go up there and then get a laugh every minute or two, mm-hmm. yeah, because they were just talking and building a world. So I think right? that first special, we were just happy to see him. We're absolutely, like absolutely. But like, he also has the equity and the confidence in the audience. It's like what we always talk about stand up is like if you can train a if you can train an audience that every time they feel anxious, there's a positive reward at the end of it, mm-hmm. they enjoy the anxiety 
Mm-hmm. Right? It's Pavlovian. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's right? Like, where it's are we great. going with yeah. this? Exactly. Where is it? But if they you, know it's going to pay off. Exactly. So it's like that that same feeling of when a comic is bombing and you're an audience member, you're up there like, this feels so awful. If there's no reward, you hate it. But if there's a reward, that awful feeling kicks in. You're like, oh, it's about to go down. You know what it is? <laughs> it, when <laughs> it, when you know there's a reward, it's at the top of the roller coaster, the tick, 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 tick. tick. You yeah. know the fun is coming. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. So, so, so that the, those those butterflies that you feel inside, you you tend to enjoy them. And when Chappelle is up there and he's building up those butterflies, you notice that there's a calm in the audience. Mm. If you ever watch him live, right, and you watch really good guys live, not guys that rely only on momentum, but guys that cre- can create a calm within their crowd, mm-hmm. right? Like Tony Woods is like a master of this, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, we're just hanging out. Imagine you could make 3,000 people think that you could just hang out. Exactly. And um, he's he he basically he basically took all that equity that he built up over his whole career and he put it into that one special and actually yeah. spoke to us. Right. It was the fucking shit, man. That's so great. are you are That's you great. that premeditated with your sets in terms of um with your bits that you know, let me just let me just kind of play this out a little longer than drop it on them. Are you that premeditated? So or? for me, it always starts off kind of like ranting, right? I'll have one idea, and then I'll roll with this idea, and I'm just kind of throwing things at a board. It's almost like an abstract art in a way. I'm just like yelling tags and a lot of momentum building. <laughs> it's I'm just yelling shit, everything right. that can go with it, and and then after I stretch that bit out and get everything I can, I start finding out where the real laughs are. So like a bit that I'll stand up doing, I'll like one night sit down. And when I'm sitting, I can't really perform it. So I'll find out where each funny line really is. And then I'll find out how I can build as much tension before that line to get the most juice out of the orange. Right, so a lot of guys are just walking over their punchlines. I don't want. I want that alley oop thrown as high as possible. So when it's dunked, mm-hmm. one, one thing like, I learned boom. from Andrew very early. We came up together, yeah. and he's obviously just so good so quickly. I was the power he used, the power in silence. I actually I picked up from Andrew is like he was always good, even a year in at being really quiet and just letting it be okay. Build, and yeah. that takes a lot of confidence. I f- would freak out. This is like a newer thing for me. Yeah. Finally, being like, yo, it's cool. It's cool. Just but be. that for me. Th- there is that panic initially, and that's why I'm just going, going, going. Yeah. But it's once I find the bit, uh, it, like I don't feel panicked once I know that there's the punchline here and how they're going to react to it. So right. you're kind of writing jokes backwards. Always. Like, it's like you know where you're getting to, and then you just kind of go back. Okay, how can I? Especially get with here? a story, like uh-huh. once I have the end of the story. Yeah. That one minute story becomes seven minutes. Got it. Got right. Because now it, we're it. just having fun. Like there's a bit right now that in the act that. Alex has seen this from, that's Alex, right? Alex has seen, you, you see, he's seen this bit from it being maybe 30 seconds mm, yeah. to 10, now it's 10, it could be 10 minutes. Mm. Because I know the end. So I know the out. There's no right. anxiety. Right. We know where it ends. We know the reaction. Now it's just how much fun can we have in this world we set up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that, that punchline can that you that you know is strong enough to build to is something that will illuminate a a kind of a universal truth that they hadn't thought about that you know is going to crush them or come out of absolutely nowhere that they couldn't have seen oh yeah right like bait and switch or bait and switch misdirect but it can misdirect in a way that like it speaks to something or misdirect in something you set up in the beginning like sometimes you you plant a seed real early they forget that it's planted Mm -hmm. Right, and then you see mm-hmm. that seed come to Chappelle's be watered. Chappelle's a master of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. He talks about it in the special. Subtle. He does. Yeah, like, yeah, like, I'm no. so good at this. I'm gonna tell you the punchline. Oh like, yeah, and so then I'm, so, I, so I kicked her in the pussy. Yeah. And then he goes all the way to the back, <laughs> and then he comes right back at the end of the show. He's like, "See, I told you, I'm all." And then he kills that. Dude, as a usual. gem he gave Same. me just because he's just the friendliest dude. We're not like friends by any stretch, but I just met him once, and I remembered his inside the actor studio. He said, "Going to theater school, acting school." Help them be a better comic. And I said, how? And he goes, you just learn little things. Like one time a teacher was talking about us and he was just holding up a remote control and he was just like, everybody look at the remote control. And then he keeps talking about us about everything. He just keeps moving the remote control. And then he just keeps talking and keep talking and suddenly, ha! It was some story like that. And then he was like, and that was a big lesson for me. And I was like, yeah! Then in my head, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and then I saw him. I was him, about to say, what the fuck are you yeah, talking so about? Yeah, so I saw him go on stage at the comic strip that night, does yeah. four hours. And at one point, he starts talking about all this shit. Jack Johnson and how, like, John McCain only ran on this platform because 
something happened with Jack Johnson. You know who Jack Johnson was? He was a great white. He used to black heavyweight boxer. He used mm-hmm. to knock out white dudes. Only love white women. Champion. They yeah. threw him in jail on the Man Act. That's what they got Elliot Spitzer on. And then he's this whole all conspiracy theory shit. And he goes like, I'm not even gonna tell y'all what I think about 9/11. Like, you wanna know what I thought about 9/11? You don't know who I think did 9/11? And everybody's like, Yeah, tell us here. He's like, All right, you're fine. Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> like the whole thing is one big punk episode <laughs> and so Kutcher. all this yeah, Ash, all this was just bullshit all this conspiracy theory stuff is just waving the remote yeah. or the phone and his, then his remote is actually his cigarette interesting yeah so like if you if you see how he uses the cigarette on stage right it's like okay let me milk this moment if i just stare at you as an audience you're gonna get uncomfortable mm-hmm. but if i look up and i take a deep drag of the cigarette and i blow it out and I tap it right it's just how do I build this what is he gonna say what is he gonna say what is, yeah, he, what yeah, is yeah. he gonna say so like everything with him is calculated man yeah. it's like use of, use of his voice yeah no, and, and yet nobody talks like that I don't use I don't term. care where you're from yeah. nobody <laughs> hey I don't, that's not an accent bitch <laughs> <laughs> but it is the most compelling yeah. sounding voice yeah right like we love the sound of that you know what's really funny is um when I drink too much, I fall into the Chappelle's cadence. That's how. <laughs> that's how I told Dude, him that he's like, he's like, me too. Night. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> um, but but isn't it isn't it isn't it funny that or interesting that as great as he is to me, uh, the bird revelation, which I asked him about it, and he said, I said, how long did it take you to come up with that? And he said, he said like three months. Yeah. But he was ready for that moment. Mm-hmm. Because there's no rust on him. Took him 20 years to come up with that. Correct. Let's be honest. Well, it, it did, but it took him 20 years to be ready for that moment because everything that he was talking about was in in our consciousness in that moment, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that was happening in real time. Right. So that he was able to comment on that. It's tapping into the zeitgeist. Yeah. In, in in such a in such a in such a brilliant so, way. That's the different be- difference between comics that write and don't write. Right, it, people go, oh, but you got these old jokes. It's not about your jokes being old. It's just you're not addressing culture. When you write new jokes, a lot of times it doesn't matter what they're about, but you're speaking about things in a way that needs to be spoken about, right? So I can talk about fucking bananas or Michael Jackson. It doesn't really matter, but I'll speak about it in a way that the ecosystem needs. Like for the last special, that the ecosystem needed. At least for me, I thought they needed like political incorrectness. Like everything was too safe, everything was too PC, mm-hmm. everything was too network, right? So I was like, oh no, we need to push back and talk about all these things that don't. You can't create that if you're not writing new, right? You have to be able to speak on it, and you should, man. Like you have a lot of stuff that needs to be spoken on now. Whether you develop the skill set to speak on the really difficult things is up to you and the amount of time you put in. But you got a lot to talk about. I do, and and what's crazy is that we're we're living in a time right now where um, the the variable for for the media is is clicks, and it's not about the due dil- diligence and and checking on the validity of a source. It's like we got to be first, and there's no honor amongst thieves. They just want to get it out there. Man, I learned this from Skip Bayless. He was talking about what he talks on when he tweets stuff. He doesn't even read comments. He just mm. looks at the insights and see if it spikes. He's going with it. That's what he's going with. That's you know, his entire like, career. Not even that's like, all of ESPN. Doesn't care if he's right, wrong, whatever. As long as it got more impressions. That's that's, that's his what opinion he's going now. With. Yeah. And mm. have you been you've been fucked over by that? Hundred oh. percent. Irreparable. As, as, I don't know. Remains to be seen. Really? Remains to be seen. Now, this is the Me Too shit. Correct. And as DL said to me, you took one for the team. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a case of uh, collateral damage. It was you got lumped in with the bad guys. Correct. And we're cleaning house. We're mm-hmm. getting all the... Not only we cleaning... Well, yeah, we're cleaning house. Uh this guy is an easy target mm. um he he is a very powerful um this agent is, right he this is. right because think about this you it's very easy 
if you've created this, you know, this I've created this this character. Now they had just taken down another powerful Hollywood guy. What's another powerful Hollywood guy? I'm just a, I am a, a journeyman actor, just play one on stage TV. actor. <laughs> I, I I grew up in in extreme poverty. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents are theater actors. I grew up in in a retirement home. I am a, a Jewish stage actor. There is no white privilege. Mm. There has never been any right. white privilege. Yeah, uh, I did forty movies uh, before I did Entourage, where I'm you know playing blah 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 you know his best friend. Yeah. We were getting scale plus ten, and I'm grinding, and I was I wouldn't change a thing. Right. Okay, so I've earned every crumb I've ever you know in, in my entire life. Right. You know I've auditioned for all those roles, and then unbeknownst to me, you play a big major Hollywood guy mm-hmm. you know who is very abrasive and we all know those people they mm-hmm. exist and they're not so fun to, it, it, it's fun to watch yep. but we don't really want to be around them let's be honest I mean that's why you put it on TV it's entertaining yeah. correct yeah. you know what I'm saying so that's a, that's an easy target to take a shot who at who wouldn't believe the story about no, not only who wouldn't believe it but yeah. who wouldn't rally behind to of take course. that guy mm-hmm. down because you Unless must be it, him right Right. And Every they, time we see you, you're doing these abrasive, brash things. You're speaking absolute. about women in a certain way. So why wouldn't you do that in your regular life? Correct. Actors are real. Correct. That's Correct. what I was saying earlier about you become this character, right? You, It is so synonymous with who you are. So any behavior within that character becomes believable within your life. Now- do you regret any of it? Like with the, no, the, you you that that's a just slippery slope. Being so slope. tied to that character, you, you, the, you but don't. do you think it was targeted? Do you think it was a specific target? Because I look no. at guys like Louie and shit like that, and I'm like, none of these girls offered information. They were contacted. That mm. means that there is a strike. That means somebody said, you know who we're getting today? We're getting Louie. This is the story. Figure out the evidence to support it. Like some college essay. And we've heard. Do you think that that same yeah. thing was with you where they were like, hey, this is the story. How do we prove it? They th- think about this for a second. Who benefits how, from putting that story out? What is the variable? How much, as you just said, your, your buddy, it's all about the clicks, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So the problem was it was a feeding frenzy. And the editors basically said, "Go out there, get me more, get me more, mm-hmm. get me, get me those Hollywood actors." Let you know what I mean? Let's round them up. Mm-hmm. And and so wow. that. And, and, but the problem is now is that the audience has, it, 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 you know, they've worn out that they they're not they're looking at it going, well, who 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 are you taking a lot down of next? Eye rolls now you when, know, when so you, you see some shit. It's like, like oh, yeah, and so on. and so it's almost like, you know, when when. Um, it, it, it's on here's the biggest tragedy okay. of what's happened mm-hmm. is because of that and because of opportunists coming out of the woodwork the real victims are taking a step back mm-hmm. and that forget about me i'm just some random dude that got taken down mm-hmm. i took one for the team forget about me um, I'm just one dumb life. Who cares, right? It was only my whole life that that I put towards acting, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter, right? Just put, put me aside. Uh, you know, I just, you know, just put. It's all good. So all good. You're, you're that shit hit me in my stomach. I was like, <laughs> Damn, bro. Oh my okay, <laughs> right. Um, but what's more important than that is that you know, it's it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a deep misuse. Of power. Of power. Yeah, of it, re- it really is. And now what's happened is, if you notice, they'll try that stuff. They tried it with Tony Robbins. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They, 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 it keeps happening. What you don't hear about is that Jeffrey Rush, Academy Award winner Jeffrey Rush, just took the um, Australian, t- the, the, the Telegraph, to court over his Me Too stuff and, and won, won. Mm. and won, and they paid him for all the money that he lost because they like, see any of it. No, no, of course you don't see it. Mm. The, wait, hold on a second. Think about that. Mm. Yeah. The first actual, we're not talking about the court of public opinion. Yeah. Mm. We're talking about an actual court, and none of us have heard about it. Mm. And it just happened. Mm. We don't want that stuff mm. because it messes with the golden goose. Doesn't do clicks. What's the golden goose? No, no, it's not about the golden goose. The golden goose has been, yeah, is it's been the scandal. Right. The scandal is is the golden goose. Every accusation is a golden egg. Right. Right, but 
it's lost its momentum now and people they see it and they go i, I don't know if we can b believe this stuff anymore man it's every day you're, you're taking down a new dude and 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 you know do, do we and they're they're shutting off now what's reality for me reality for me is every morning i have to check in and 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 go deep and go inward and and understand and own the truth and operate like that. Mm -hmm. You can't be a slave to your thoughts and your fears, otherwise you'll be in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why people really go off the rails. And when I go on the road and I'm selling out these rooms and I'm standing up there with nothing to hide and I'm making them laugh from beginning to end and that's my job, yeah. that's real. Mm. That's that's reality, not and and the rest of it I can't control. But I can connect with people on the road. Mm -hmm. I can get better as a comic every day. Mm. You know what I mean? And not take a victim mentality, which is, man, they took me down. Yeah, yeah. But I, you what, were tight. Admit that there had to be moments where you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Well, when, when nothing makes sense, when absolutely nothing makes sense, uh, it 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 it, 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 it can it just it can do your head in. Yeah, it can really do your head in. Yeah, for sure, no doubt. There is a uh, there's a I can't say names, but a buddy of mine was dating a woman who was one of the women who called out. I forget who it was, Wines or something like that, right? And um, she, uh, what he said, what she said to him was, uh, "I'm upset that I'm not getting offered to co-host the View." I'm upset that I'm not getting these same offers that these other women are getting. Meaning, sh her purpose for there coming was out for was to yeah. get was to get on the fucking <sighs> view and be a co-host. And she was. It was like, whoa, whoa. There's always motives behind that type of shit. Though. What's what, what's what's much worse than that mm. is the woman that was raped. Yeah, the, yeah. That's the worst is, part is, about is the it. woman that was raped and is saying, "Hold on, man." This 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 is this has become something else, and, yeah. and, and, I, and I can't, and and she's not coming forward. Or that's that's forward the tragedy. Out what by, the what the great things right. that have come. There's yeah. been some great things that have come out of this. Equal pay. Yeah. Um. In, you know, in, in terms, uh, you know, my sister is a, is a director. She's women are getting more opportunities than ever before as directors. Right. There's been some amazing things, and I'll take one for the team for that. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, I'll you know she I'll, can't I'll, put I'll, you I'll, in a movie. I'm saying, you know what <laughs> I mean? like, bro, <laughs> sis, what's up? Come on, sis. <laughs> Took a little sip of that yeah. drink, like this. <laughs> 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 little sip in my neck. <laughs> no, no lie can last forever. <laughs> Just remember that. Remember that. So that's this, why we got to control our shit. What were you saying? Oh Two God. questions I had, and they might be the same thing. One, you said you have to go inward every morning yeah. and say, I know the truth. Or yeah. What is the truth to you? The, the, the truth is I know who I am, and I know who, the, who I am in my soul. And, and people can, can, you know, they can have a misconception about me, but I can't control that narrative. You know what I mean? I can only control what I know to be but the you truth. you can't well, control it. Yeah, now. and this is what I was going to... My second question is, you said you're just a guy who's misunderstood. And you yeah. you have an opportunity as a comic to be understood. Cliff's Notes for us. What do you want understood about you? Yeah, I have a joke for you, by the way. I think I, it depends Go. if you want to... <laughs> it depends if you want to use it. But uh, uh, like if you're in a really shitty town doing stand-up, you can say that like one of the benefits of the Me Too movement is you get to see me here. <laughs> <laughs> I would never be in Homestead, Pennsylvania <laughs> if it wasn't for hashtag me too. <laughs> How stupid, man. Like, that's a way of leaning into, leaning this, into this thing. See, you know, yeah, you know what's interesting? It's funny. Um, if, if I... If I were to one of the one of the misconceptions about me is that um, I really enjoy going bad on people and uh, making them feel terrible, mm. and I'm an equal opportunity offender. You know, that's basically what Ari Gold the was. The character was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was the greatest. What my job with that character was was to take a guy that said terrible things to people, very hurtful things. And to make him uh, dimensional mm. and and truthful and accessible mm -hmm. and human. And, tr and human and tragic and all of these things. And that was my job. And the result of putting everything that I had into this character. And by the way, like you talked about Chappelle. Yeah, I, I mean, 
you know, I've got 40 years on the stage as an actor. So, mm-hmm. there, you know, that wasn't an accident. Right. I didn't get lucky. It wasn't because the suit fit. Right. You know what I mean? There were other variables that were involved. Yeah. I went to NYU. I went to the National Theater of Great Britain and, and studied Shakespeare. I was at um, Second City doing sketch comedy and improv and mm-hmm. all these things. And a lot of people, yeah, I mean, like... Even Joe Rogan, when when he introduced me one night, he said, "Yeah, that's, that's all we need is another actor trying to do stand up." You know what I mean? And <laughs> it, yeah, one thousand percent. Joe got real yeah. one, <laughs> You know, and 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 the, and, and the reason Joe. why Joe is so um, so loved is because he is authentic. Yeah, yeah. and pe- and people gravitate towards that. Yeah, and he'll never stop being that way. And then afterwards, he came up to me and he said, "He said, oh, you take this seriously,' and I do." Yeah, yeah. And believe me, if I didn't, you would have heard about it. Yeah. Right. Oh, you well, would have heard. Oh, yeah. That's Could've that's why it. I feel like you, feel you must be doing well. Because nobody's talking about yeah. you, period. They're not going to compliment you. Yeah. Okay? They're not going to compliment you because they're not rooting for you. Well, did, but, you, did you hear what DL said uh, the other day about me? When no. we were, I was doing his show, and I love DL. He's yeah. one of my favorite comics, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, he hits on many different levels, and he... Now I'm saying that yeah. he's saying it. But I'm no. going to cut that clip that he hits on men, not different <laughs> levels. <laughs> We're just going to run with that. That's going to be great. <laughs> um, Hashtag no, he, 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 <laughs> he too. We, we, were, we, were both doing, um, we were both doing this charity gig. By the way, you'll never get see any coverage of any charity I ever do. Yeah. You'll never see a picture of me and my mom walking down the street. That's real charity, ever. though. Yeah, yeah. You'll, 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 you'll do it for the fam- for you know, the So to, to be understood, shit. yeah, I'm a fucking mama's boy. Yeah, I grew up in That's Chicago. So yeah, I have a great relationship with my mom and my sister. Yeah, I've grinded my whole life. Yeah, I'm a decent human being. Yeah, I have people's back. Yeah, Boring. I'm loyal. Boring. <laughs> Boring, <laughs> yeah. Boring as shit. Who the fuck cares about that yeah, yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. Who'd right? you curse out? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, we need, we need a scandal. We need a story. We, you know... Um, but what was DL saying? So DL said that, you know, he said that he saw me up on stage and he was actually jealous because he knew how long I've been doing stand up. And I said to him, there's no way you were jealous. There's no way. Because right. that guy is is a king, man. Killer. He mm. crushes it. And I'm still just trying to figure it out. But the fact that he said, by the way, DL doesn't have to say that. Yeah. He would never, know. ever say that. Yeah. Um, so I do know that, uh, yeah, believe me, if I, if I was up there running the clock out, doing a Q&A, being a hack, you would have heard. Running the clock out, doing a Q&A. <laughs> you know what Bro. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can name but, names. I've seen, I've seen some. I've seen some shows. You, you so. know what I'm saying? Is if you I, were if you guy, I welcome it, anyone. We would know. If you yeah. were the guy that asked to go second, <laughs> we would have heard about it. We would, we would know. We would know. Yeah. And again, I haven't seen you. Asked to go second, I take... I take, you know, any killer, any killer that want, that's is not headlining yet and wants to open for me, I will only get better. There's a guy named Eric Myers. I don't know if you know him, but not he's, yet. man, he, it just gets out there and he just throws bombs for just uh, until they pull him off that, that stage, right. man. And people are like, you're going to let him fucking feature for him? Like, I'm like, hell yeah. 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 Because it's my job. Iron to then go, iron, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and they are exhausted by the time I hit the stage. Yeah. And it's not a great idea. Um, and he should be headlining, and he will be. Right. Um, he's had an interesting journey himself. He'll be the first person to tell you that. And um, But yeah, I, I don't want some viciously mediocre... Um, you know, someone that's soft. So you, you can know, save the day. Yeah, so I can come right. in and look better. Yeah. That's not interesting to me. I want to get better fast, and and I'll do whatever it takes to do that. And that's yeah. why you haven't heard a word. Right. But <laughs> not hearing a word is, is the right thing, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. That's a good thing. Yeah. Because we would hear. And people talk. And there are people out there that, you know, that sometimes struggle, and especially newer guys, and, and then you hear those the word on the street. Yeah. You know. Especially if it's an actor, a successful actor. Because there is this resentment I think stand-ups have for actors. I don't I don't personally have it because I think any actor, at least a comedic actor that doesn't do stand-up is an idiot. Like I think they're a bona fide idiot because how else could anybody see you be funny? Like you're basically just going, hey, director, I'm really funny. Well, how? Do you have anything? No, but if you give me a shot. Well, why don't you do something where they can come see you every single week? At least improv, bare yeah. minimum. Just business sense. I'm just talking about like baseline. I'm investing in you and your humor without knowing if you're funny at all. That's an absurd notion to me. So like when I see actors do it, we've had friends that you know were initially yeah. really want to act and then they yeah. started doing stand up. Mm. But uh, I think comics are gonna comics who aren't successful are always gonna have an excuse for their lack of success. You're not taking any stage time away from people. 
It's the reality of the matter. You sell tickets. You either sell tickets or you don't sell tickets. The question is going to be is that next time you come into a market, do people come out again? If they do, it's because you did a good job the first time. There's been a lot of acts that go out there. They sell a lot of tickets the first time, then they come back on the market, can't sell any tickets. Listen, I know that every every time I perform, it's a home game. I get that it's not an away game. I mm. get it. And and that they're there to see me. That's I everybody d- with an audience, though. Yeah, 45 minutes is, it's just a game. Like, Yo, it ain't no home, it ain't no way. 45 I'm, minutes to hold my attention, I'm be you honest gotta with be you. funny. I'm gonna be honest with you, this idea that like people who don't have a fan base at all should be out there headlining is kind of absurd. It's, they don't it's understand like, business. Yeah, headlining is when you have fans, and then you build up to that, right? So there was a time where like people were just such fans of comedy that they would just go out to the comedy show and just watch Joe Schmo perform, right? But in reality, the reason why you're listening to a stranger talk for an hour is because you're invested in that person. And you know who you killed that them. business model? Comics, by being shitty and headlining when they weren't ready. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> when nobody knew who you were, and then everybody walked out like, I just wasted my fucking money, let's never do that yeah. again. Yeah. Every one of you guys is doing a massive disservice to comedy. Now I want to see you. You better not bomb. <laughs> I, I, I I would be honored for you to come out and see me, man. Yeah, because this week. When's the, yeah, I was about to say, yeah. when's the next Are you show? doing shows this week in the city? I wish, because I have to leave tomorrow to go to, to Pennsylvania. Like, maybe, this, maybe, maybe, maybe tonight, tonight we can, we can yeah. pop in yeah, to a club. Yeah, he's got some pull. You go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let's Get do that. it. Yeah, for sure, man. Let's do this it. This will be fun. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, stoked, I would, man. I would, I would, I would, I would love it, man. Because, I, yeah, what, to to you know, piggyback what you guys were saying. The reality is, is no matter what stage you're on, you have to respect the space that you're occupying. And if I'm up there doing stand up, and I'm wasting people's time, then you, then, then I don't deserve to be there. But I know, believe me. Uh, I understand that in the very beginning they're excited to see me, and there's that first few moments of you like get five wow, minutes. not not even five. Oh, really? It's <laughs> a lot shorter than that, man. Yeah. Believe me, hmm. it's a lot shorter than that. Hmm. Um, because with with my my crowd, they for the most part haven't been to a stand up show, yeah, so right. they go silent fast because yeah. they're just like, what is he going to say? So the sh- it goes silent, and if I don't hit him, and if I don't continue to hit him and build. It's it's so, game over. Yeah, it's they also game... don't know if you can do stand up. Yeah, right, right. So exactly, it's like, if you had proven yourself as a funny stand up, then they're at ease. Right, they're waiting for you to make them feel comfortable. Right. They're like, buddy, I'm here. Right. I got the drinks. I told my friend. Right. We watched the show. I don't fucking know if you can do this. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know you're funny on the show, but that doesn't yeah. mean you're funny here. Exactly. Make me laugh quick. And if you right. get that first laugh, they're like. Thank God. Right. Okay, uh, I can relax. We're gonna have fun. Exactly. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's certain guys like people know me just from stand up. So I can go up there, probably not make him laugh for a little while, but they're like, Man, I've seen hours of his jokes online. He's funny. When he's ready to turn it on, he'll turn it on. Yeah. Chappelle can walk up there and not make anybody laugh. Right? I've, I've because been to, you know he's I've been funny. To some of Chappelle's like, you know, I don't know what you guys call it where you're just like yeah. riffing and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like some secret show he did like at 1 a.m. in uh, I think the knitting room. Yeah, yeah. And he just talked for like two and a half hours. Yeah. I might have laughed like twice, but I'm just sitting here like, oh shit, I'm in the same room with Dave Chappelle. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're like, not funny, you have to be interesting. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So but yeah. That's the thing. You need to like. No, I can't be up there for two hours now and no, not be bro, like, bro. Literally, well, it was fucking Hassan Minaj yeah, was yeah. like opening up. He had a and newspaper. He had a newspaper. Yeah, he was literally yeah. just reading headlines and he would just joke back and forth. Yeah. And he did that for two and a half hours and nobody left. It was like two in the morning, three in the morning. You know after what? a while, we're just sitting there just like, holy shit, we're in a room watching Because you know that this guy's <laughs> funny. He's already proven. And yeah. like, so there is a world with it's you, like you where like- you would go like, watch Michael Jordan like shoot by himself for in the sure. gym. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like it's the same thing I was doing. There's there's a world where you, where, where it's almost like, if you put out a bit, right? One of your jokes. It doesn't have to be a long one, but it has to be a good, strong bit. There's almost something about that. I wouldn't be surprised if you even see ticket sales like spike, right? Because they're, it's proven. That's your Yelp review, right? That's the picture of the food at the restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. And they're going, okay, no, he's funny. This is a funny joke. Okay, we can go out. It, yeah, it might be a, a risk if we haven't seen any stand up. Who knows what's going to happen? Because trust me, there's a lot of like these YouTube celebs and shit that go out and try to do stand up and it's awful, right. right? But you might put one of your bits out on YouTube and then they have something that they can digest beforehand just to prove to their friends. I would not be shocked if you see ticket sales go up and the comfort initially yep. with an audience increase tenfold. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're fine. We're in good hands. Right. Well, 
I, I actually, for the first time recently, did that because the, um, I've been, you know, pretty much under the radar and not, you know, not allowing anyone to film it or anything because I'm, I'm documenting this whole thing and I mm -hmm. want it to kind of be a surprise. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just recently started putting some stuff out. And what's so fascinating about that game is because it's a live form, it's so interesting because you kind of lose a, a generation when you see it being filmed. You know what I mean? And you're not there live. It's a trip. Oh, but, yeah. It, comedy is not good. It does not translate to TV well because yeah. you lose all tension, right? It's yeah. like you, there's, there isn't the anxiety that the audience has, and that's why like the yeah. real good guys can kind of penetrate. I also think the way it's shot is very important and the sound is very important. I mean, off off the pod, we'll sit down and, and you know, if you want to go over like different ways, you can you can kind of recreate that that live feel through video. We could do that. Interesting. But I really think that it would be a cool experiment with you and I would track your ticket sales once you have a piece out there. Once you have something that they can look for because the first thing they're going to do is if you're in a market, you, they're going to go, oh, he does stand-up? Let me see if I can see it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's one clip of you doing stand-up on YouTube. It's not even stand-up. It's like, I only watch a little bit of it, but it's like you at an award show or something like that. Here's what it might be. Um, and they they say it's stand up and it's not. But it's nice. Did you present it or something or something like that? Right. Yeah, I've done. You know, I've done a, a lot of hosting and presenting and blah blah, blah all that kind of stuff. And but um, I'll never forget it at uh, Just for Laughs. Right. My agent at the time, two thousand eight, said you, they want you to go host. And I was like, oh, well, I don't do stand up. He goes, no, no, this is going to be great. He convinced me to do it. I get out there with my boy Brian Callen, who's a great yeah, stand -up. love Brian. Yeah, Brian's a great stand up, yeah. and, and uh, shout out to the fire and the kid. There you go, mm -hmm. and a great Brian and Shaw. There you go, and and Brian's been a been a, a great friend and, and mentor to me. And he, two thousand eight, we go out there together, and it's the night before I'm supposed to to host this thing, and you know he goes, you know what? Let's just see what they expect of you. We go to the theater. The theater is bigger than we have ever imagined, and the people are leaving. And he says to them, "Hey guys." Uh, what do you expect? To, what, are, what are your expectations for Jeremy? They said, well, it's going to be uh, presented live on TV. Jeremy's going to get up and do a quick 20. And he said, <laughs> and, 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 and he said I'm sorry, a quick 20 of stand-up? And they said, yeah. He goes, oh, no, Jer Jeremy's never done stand-up. And they go, oh, no, he'll be fine. And he just, he went, imagine a white dude going even whiter. <laughs> he was, fuck, it was crazy. And he said, all right, Bubba, we're just going to go to dinner and we're going to talk this through. And the great thing about me is ignorance is bliss. Mm. So I really didn't know anything about stand-up then. If I did, it, now it would have freaked me out because yeah. I've been through the game. So he, he sat me down. It was very brilliant. He said, here's what you're going to do. Tell me a story right now that you think is funny. Tell him the story about taking my mom to the Golden Globes and and you know, do, and, and he said, great, great, great. Okay, here's the deal. You're going to, this is the through line of your 20 minutes. He spoke to me like an actor. Your through line is, tell this story and we're going to create all these obstacles hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. You're not doing stand up. He put yeah. me at ease. I'm up there on live TV with <laughs> one night's notice <laughs> do, at just for laughs. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And by the way, I had to do 5 minute rap wrap arounds between each comic. 6 wow. comics. That's a 30 that's 30 more minutes. Yeah. I did 50 minutes of stand up Fuck. on live TV and I was dumb enough to do it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> they, should, they should have gotten anyone else. But I, listen, I took every note that he gave me, because I'm an actor, every single note he gave me, and we survived. Yeah. I don't ever want to see it. Right. <laughs> Believe me, I don't want to see it. But you know, you didn't hear about it, uh. so it wasn't terrible, mm -hmm. right? But you know, you know, so you, those, from, and that's out there. So there, that's like the only thing out there. That's like, some you know thing from from 2008 that I literally found out about the night before. That's not fair, mm -hmm. right? That's not that's not giving a guy a a, a chance. But a fair now, take. yeah, now yeah, you put now, out a little something. Now we're gonna talk. Let's talk about it after. Let's find like a piece. I'll look at you know. You can tell me something to stand up, even if it's a couple minutes. But that's just what people will see. That's what the club will push out mm -hmm. right to their email list. Yes. And it's like, oh shit, he really does this. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to see this. Yes. Boom, and I would just track sales. See if that makes a difference for you. Because it changed my career, right? Just having something for them to go see. I was like, you know me from the podcast. Why aren't you coming out? No, no, yeah. no. They need the product proven. Yes. Okay? So. But your do stuff does translate because I've seen it. I've even just seen random stuff that they filmed at like the comedy seller of your stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the um, jumping out of the airplane bit. Right. 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 Yeah. How long uh, did it take you to, to come up with that? That was pretty quick. Sometimes with stories, like, again, these, like, even with my new hour now, I've only been doing it for a few months, 
but it, it's like now it's refined stage. It's like add and refine, add and refine. So it starts out real fat, and then I start cutting all the fat mm. off of it. You know, so from that's my process. It's like I don't know, Al. How how long do you think it was before we were after the last special to to I had like good forty five, at least forty five. Uh, fairly recent, so probably six months. No, no, no less. Four months. Yeah. yeah till four yeah, months. maybe like four till it's, till it like forty five. But it was like. But I don't know. I can kind of produce. I can kind of produce a lot. It's the refining stage to get it to the you know place where I really think it can be special. So you're saying you'll get after a bit. It'll it'll inspire you to get after it if you know where you're going to be landing the Bro, plane. If I. If I have the ending, or if I know where this goes, so in that story, so what, would, what was your what was your initial ending of that story? It's a great fertile premise. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's just it was like that bit specifically was like I needed something vulnerable in the set because I attack a lot. Okay, so if you attack a lot, you also need to attack yourself and right. create the vulnerability so they allow you to attack. Right now we're really breaking down stand up. So like every every arc within the stand up set is like if I'm going hard on a group or I'm going hard on other people I'm being super judgmental I also need to go hard on myself and I also need to show that I'm fucking I'm not just this guy who's you know pointing fingers you know I'm not like one of these people making fun of you know actors outfits on the red carpet you know I also make fun of myself so that that joke represented maybe like a five minute chunk where it was just all vulnerability all on me you could laugh at me because I've been making fun of you guys so once we're in there, I'm just tapping into the vulnerability of every part of that situation. So you knew by the end you were going to reveal that you you needed him, you needed to be held. What, what, what if you don't mind me asking? Sure, so what, what was what was like the button in your mind when you knew? Okay, so so the so the thing I'm using within the bit is the the juxtaposition between the masculinity and machismo and homosexuality. Right. Right. And here I am trying to fight this thing. Uh -huh. So the flip is going to be me laying into it. Right. Right. We know that. It's like, I'm, I'm so, I'm so I love bitches. And once you had that, you're like, I got to do it. <laughs> now it's like, how gay can I make myself? Right. <laughs> right. I know at the end, I'm going to want him to hold me. I'm going to want him inside me. I'm just going to go as far as possible, as far right. as I possibly can with that. But initially it's how, how vulnerable can I make myself and how uncomfortable can I make myself? We're strapped together. Um, you know, the, the, the airplane is shaking. So I'm essentially twerking on him or whatever these things. Like, <laughs> right. How can I build up all these other things that are going to make this uncomfortable for a dude who's macho if i'm like a effeminate woke guy then that's not funny but if i'm this the, dude who's like yeah i like girls blah 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 and this mm -hmm. person's on me then we can create that that kind of humor so yeah we, we'll sit down man we'll go over some some of the bits and like see if i'm sure it's similar to like uh when you take a comedic choice in acting right it's like this is funny because i'm taking this seriously the hardest part about the reason why comics suck at acting is because we're trying to be funny on stage. And I think great comedic actors are trying to be serious. And them being serious in this awkward situation makes it funny. Right? Like, Will Ferrell's not trying to be funny. He, his character believes he's oh. a stepbrother. Or well, he believes... Because uh, Will, Will is a great example of how to play comedy, which is you play it a little more serious mm -hmm. than the serious stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's playing a Greek tragedy in Step Brothers. Yeah, when, when when their parents tell them they have to get jobs, Th that's the craziest idea they've ever heard in their lives. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and they are going to lose their, and that's why it's so funny because yeah. he's because he's playing it serious, right? Yeah, on stage we're up there going, "Hey, I'm funny, and I'm trying to be funny, and here's me trying to be funny." And then you see Chris Rock do that in a movie, you're like, ah, "I guess it's kind of funny that you roasted him." <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. it's not vulnerable. There's no like any acting that I've ever done that people thought was good. I just dumbed myself down like crazy. And I didn't know that what I was doing was funny. The joke was on me without me even knowing it. It's, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm a little offended by you just saying dumb yourself down. That's my character. <laughs> right. No, no, no. But that's no, what no. I needed to do. Well, th th it's semantics, but there's a different choice of words. Okay, go, go. Um, it's not dumbing yourself down. It's, it's first of all, you know, it. 
you just simplified. This is what what I find fascinating about comics and actors. Yeah, yeah. You you believe that comics should just immediately jump in into acting and be like, bro, dumb yourself down and fucking kill the game. <laughs> that, no, hold on, hold on, brother. Uh, go, go, yeah, go, 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 I can just jump on that stage and fucking kill it. I all I have to do is be smart. Is yeah, it's just it's it just it just it's just it just tell my stories and hit my punchlines. Yeah, I get it, man. Yeah. I'm I, I you know I, I'll do this tomorrow, man. I'm I'm all good. Don't worry about it. But see, the thing about thing about <laughs> acting is it's like if if you it's it's logging the hours like stand up it's going th- it's going through that journey it's the rite of passages yeah. and all that different stuff and then it's like well whatever character you're playing yeah. doesn't have the skill set that you have okay yeah, so yeah. that character doesn't have the skill set so if you're relating to that person truthfully right. and you're just committing fully and the material is good, right. then it's game on. If the material sucks, then you got to bring in your, your skill set. Your skill set, right. Believe me. And, and, and as an actor, I've also, because I, my background is in sketch comedy and all that kind of stuff and Second City and whatnot, so that w- the only reason I was working as much as I did – um, was because I could take these tiny roles and explore and heighten them and write on my feet and improvise and add stuff. If you were to look at the first 40 movies that I did, you try to find those lines in the script. No, I was adding and, and doing all that stuff so that they could use, you know, like when I, I don't know if you guys saw Rush Hour, mm-hmm. when I'm playing the, the yeah. Gay Versace salesman, yeah, that's a complete <laughs> freestyle rant because right. they needed comedy. Right. Mm-hmm. So how is that... That's very similar to stand up. So, and that's why when people say yeah. you can't do stand up, it's like, well, wait a minute. I might have 100%. a shot. Th- th- let me clarify by dumb down. Okay. Remove self awareness. That's what I meant. So, like, wh- if I'm playing a character or like, like a Will Ferrell's character is not being self aware in that moment, right? That th- he is leaning into, as you said, the Greek tragedy, right? <laughs> He's not going, it's weird that I'm an adult that lives with my parents and I have a bunk bed, right? But a comic is always aware. Whereas a hyper comic aware. is hyper self-awareness, right? I am awkward in this environment because, and I will tell you why, and yeah. this person is acting. So they're, they're like diametrically opposed. And I feel like that's why in a lot of ways it's so hard for comics to be funny actors. You know what they're good at? Drama. Why? Because what is drama a lot of times? Yeah, we just <sighs> hyper yeah. self awareness of your emotions in that moment, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So th- when I meant dumb, I just meant the character that I'm playing is unaware of these things that, as a comic, I would be uber aware of. I- isn't it interesting that there are more success stories of stand ups who have gone yeah. and switched arenas and in- into acting? But I, you guys would be hard pressed to find any actors that have you can't transitioned. Act funny. You can act sad. You can act angry. You can act heartbroken. You can act somber. You cannot act funny. You're either funny or you're not funny. Okay. You're funny before you were your role. Like you, yeah. as Jeremy, yeah. was a funny person before you played. Wait, a minute, Ari. I'm not Ari. <laughs> 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 <Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba>. <laughs> Beep. So uh, that's gonna be the name of my tour, by the way. <laughs> I'm not Ari. <laughs> <laughs> more, more than gold. Cancel to more, more than gold. More than gold. More than gold. Come to Homestead, Pennsylvania. Actually, Fool's gold. Act- Fool's, Fool's gold. gold. Fool's gold. Fool's gold. Fool's gold. Put that in the notebook. Oh, map. shit. Notebook. Fool's gold. How much do I owe you for that, sir? <laughs> hey, man. Um, I'm going to be. Up. Can I tell the kids where please, I'm going to be? Please do. Please do. I'm going to be in the, at the improv in Tampa, Florida on the 21st, kids. Nice. Yeah, man. And then I'm going. Then I'm after Tampa, I'm going to Orlando on the tw- at the at the improv on the 23rd so catch me there yo improv ebor city is the one in tampa great club ebor is dope tickets? as fuck it's beautiful where, yeah, where do they get tickets you go to the improv well, well, site or your you, site you can go to my site jeremypiven.com yeah. um you know uh or just go to the improv site you know how to, you know how before it works. you leave i know we did a lot of like, talk on comedy but yeah there was there was a place you know this is we talk sports on this podcast and there is yeah. i would often see you if there is a manny pacquiao fight yeah mm-hmm at Freddie Roach's wild card gym. Yeah. Watching Manny Train. Right. You're a boxing fan. Yeah. Fanatic or you like it? I'm I'm pretty fanatic. Okay. So is this guy. 
<laughs> huge boxing fan. Yeah, okay. Love boxing. Um, watching Manny train, I've never got to see him, unfortunately, live or up close. Yeah. Uh, unreal environment. This was back when every celeb in L.A. seemed to be at Freddie's gym. Have you ever been to Wildcard? Uh, just outside. There okay. was a, actually a comedy night at the place next door. Oh, right. Three at, clubs. There yeah, you go. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know they did comedy there. They used to. Yeah. Used to okay. Yeah. I didn't know Wildcard was right next to that. Yeah. You, listen, yeah. Freddie is is such a legend. I mean, yeah. and he basically, I mean, that place is like you know a little. It's a, it's a strip mall. Yeah, yeah. It's a little strip mall, and he and he put a, he, he he just set up shop there, and you build it, they will come. You know, and Manny, you know, walked in his door to and and Freddie, they've they've been they've been together ever since, and he's been an incredible mentor. But Manny, you know, you you can't until you see that speed uh, in person, you can't Unreal. imagine. But also, like you know, it's so interesting because he's such a f- happy, joyous little guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he really is. That's yeah. him. He's yeah, a nice you know, guy. really yeah. sweet guy. And what people, you know, he's, they see his frame, and he's so slight and tiny. Take a look at his calves. Unbelievable. Oh, Take yeah, a look yeah. at yeah. where, where his power yeah. comes from. I played yeah. basketball with him one time. He what? Came, yeah, he came yeah. to uh, Terminal 23 Loves while basketball. it was still open. Big hoops guy. Yeah. He, not the best ball player, but like mm-hmm. he, he's he's so explosive. Yeah, he yeah. Like, yeah. His grab form is terrible, yeah. but like yeah. he would he just to, fucking yeah. just explode like left to right and jumping and shit. And he's like so small, but like he's he, the calves, absolutely. Tons of explosiveness. Over Unreal there. athleticism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the hand speed is just absurd up up close, or what? Yeah, it, it 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 it's 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 crazy. You know, I mean his his angles that he creates. You know, um, listen, I, there's no excuse. But when when he fought Mayweather, his shoulders were jacked up. Mm-hmm. Oh and, really? Oh yeah, that's a fact. He so he, there was rumors about that that he needed shoulder surgery. He needed shoulder surgery and. Um, the, you know, we can go really deep on this. And, and he, he was working with a guy named Alex Ariza, and, yeah. and Alex is great. Alex is great with. Uh-oh. Ariza got a little. You know, yeah, he got a little heat on him. Ariza got a little heat on him from for steroids. Right. Well, uh, you know, first of all, why am I wearing that belt buckle? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I digress. Yeah. Um, so Alex. You know, we won't talk about scandals or any of that stuff. Talk about it, but but no, I don't know anything about it. I I just know that that Alex is really great. Uh, The reason I started working with him because I watched him work with Manny Shoulders, and um, he's really great at at working shoulders. You know what I mean? He he, and and he was doing a great job with Manny, and then they parted ways. And you you know, did Floyd hire him for that fight? Say that again. I think Floyd hired him for that fight. Yeah. Yeah. In, indeed, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that like people didn't talk about. There's some major s- stuff behind that. What else? Well, I mean, that's heavy. That's really heavy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That the, uh, anyway. So so Manny. <laughs> yeah, but so Floyd's I, I dad hit. trained Oscar De La Hoya when he fought Floyd. Right, but yeah, but there's a specific reason why Floyd hires a reason away from yeah from Manny and that. What's right. the reason? I mean, the argument was that you know a reason might have been giving Manny the juice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, look. All I know is that Manny's one of those guys where um, there we we wanted to see that fight yep. with Mayweather, and there was a much better version of Manny that would have been a more interesting fight. And now, after he had the shoulder surgery, and now you're seeing him, you know, pull off these great fights, which is what he was capable of. Right. And he's, you know, he's he's taking control of his life, and he's, you know, he's cleaner and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. He's a 40 year old dude. But you know he's a young forty, right? So it's going to be he's an Asian forty. An That's Asian right. 40. That shit is twenty eight. Yeah, there he's you go. Young. They're young up until they're eighty, and they have like a long fucking beard, like like Mortal Kombat or something. <laughs> they're just floating above temple steps That's in the right. lotus position. That's right, man. Well, dude, man, I appreciate you so much yeah, thank coming you so by. Much. Thank, thank, thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Bro. Yeah, I'll hit shit. you up later, and then we'll talk more. Maybe we'll hit some clubs. But uh, I would but, yeah, love let's that. Get I would some love stuff out, man. I love that. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, brother.